For the people that ain't close to Speak a little something you could toast to I ain't tryna hear about what you won't do Moving like I meant to Hit the ground running like the rent do Speak a little something that you into I ain't tryna hear about what you been through Like hold up, hold up, say what's the hold up I got the pack, who got the roll up I'm tryna pull up, it seem like every time I show up It gotta go up, see the drip, they see the glow up Oh now they know us it's funny how my pockets out of shape, but I fit for the flex Clear the phone call, hit my chick with a text Parlay through the bird with my drip from the jacks Save a couple hundred, buy your money with the rest I prefer my reefer with Henny and Coke Please don't be stingy, got plenty to smoke Show up and act up and back to the crib I do not stun, I just rap what I live Seem like they doing the most for the clout Did what I said so they know what I'm about Show up and act up and back to the crib I do not stun, I just rap what I do Ayy, winning like I ought to I ain't wanna do it, but I got to Smoking what my doctor told me not to Got these wishing they was hot too Ballin' like I need to Got my exes wishing for a redo Smell the marijuana when I speed through Hit her with a tip, that's a preview Hold up, wait up, get your weight up Shit, get your money, not your hate up Boy, draw a play up I flip my wrist, this a lay up She wanna lay up I gotta get it, I'ma stay up I'm all the way up I got my pay up I ain't playing with you I'm a coach now Commentating through the most now I be somewhere booted with my toes down Made little baby today with her nose down I prefer my reefer with Henny and Coke Please don't be stingy, got plenty to smoke Show up and act up and back to the crib I do not stun, I just rap what I live Seem like they doing the most for the clout Did what I said so they know what I'm about Show up and act up and back to the crib I do not stun, I just rap what I live
What's up, good people? Yes, uh, good people, rather. I give up. <laughs> it's like every video I've pulled in earlier is not working. <laughs> so we're having technical issues in addition to the uh, delay because of the fact that uh, I have some additional stories that were not originally a part of this evening's uh, broadcast. However, uh, to let me know that you can hear me, please type in the chat part one, part one, if you can hear me, to let me know uh, that you can hear me in the chat. And um, yeah, <laughs> like everything I'm looking for is not here. Uh, I'm gonna put this up for now. <laughs> Just so I got something up there. Thank you for letting me know that you can hear me by typing part one. Precious, Marianne, Miss M M A J M A J Nicole, Deshaun, Drea, uh, Sean, Nabriza, Chocolate, Donna, Michelle, Beauty of Ashes, Don, Marja, Margin, um, Brain on Black, and Mar Marlena, and his MJ. And as y'all can see, I'm just struggling with the names today. So <laughs> even more than normal. So um, thank you to everyone I named and all of those who um, I have not. Thank you for letting me know. And um, also, if you have not, as of yet, please like this video and hit that subscribe button if you are new. Um, this is a channel where we talk about trending topics and everything that we care about. And um, yeah, so we're going to get into our first um, story, and I shouldn't have put that poll up because of that. Um, but yeah, so, um, I'm a little frazzled because of the fact that, um, the original plan was this broadcast was only going to be about, uh, Darius Crooks and, or Darius Cooks or, uh, Darius Travoy Williams and all of his, um, recent and past shenanigans, uh, we were going to do, or are still going to do a weekend review um, with, you know, what's a weekend crook is what I'm calling it right now, but I'm open to names. So if you have a name for our weekly segment, where we'll talk about a weekend review of all of the, the stunt queen antics, etc. We'll, um, yeah, we need a name for it. A nice little quick doozy of a name. Uh, also, um, we're going to cover his fake breakup story, uh, that he created, it's been about a year now, uh, with his ex Jerome. And um, yeah, I'm just going to dig through that. And also while why I had you say part one is because as I was starting to pull things uh, this afternoon, uh, just to solidify this live stream, I ran into a lot of things on Twitter, old tweets, et cetera, that started reminding me about pieces of the story that I totally forgot about. And so I was like, this is actually much, much deeper uh, than what I was originally planning on covering. So this part one is going to be like an overview. And then we're going to come back to this story in a in a short, in the very near future. And I'm going to do a, a deep dive. In addition, what I want to ask you now is. Should I or do you want do you want me to recap surviving Darius Cooks. I'll say Cooks. Cooks five. So do you want me to recap? I should say revisit uh, surviving Darius Cooks live. So meaning for those of you who've been around a while, you know that I have I have a playlist, a couple series, a Surviving Darius Cooks series, and also an Exposed uh, Darius Crooks series, as well as a Inventing Darius Crooks series. There's only a couple episodes of that. But do you, would you be interested in me literally going right back to the beginning well, I, where I started before? Because now I remember things I didn't remember. There's been a lot of developments. Pieces have been put together that I didn't know at the time, et cetera. And um, we could just go through it live. So literally from the day I met Crooks all the way through to today. Now, what we would do with each episode 
is, you know, we would cover the history, but we would also bring in any new pieces, something, if something happened that day, well, not, maybe not that day, but if something happens that week, we'll still be talking about current day things, but we'll be doing a retrospective at the same time. And we're talking about a series that's going to take us a couple months, really, a couple months. So if you're interested in that, uh, let me know. So far, we have 88% majority rules over here, unless I make an executive decision. And it looks like uh, it looks like we're going back, back, back in time to do this, uh, this series. I already knew that. So I've been working on it already. <laughs> Truth be told, I've already been working on it. It's, it's on its way. And it, oh, I'm coming with it. Oh, I'm coming with it. Oh, and these receipts are getting so organized now. I tell you, I tell you. So um, moving to present day, I'm going to cover these two new stories. And then um, we're going to move into Darius Crooks, uh, the business at hand that we already had. Um, one is um, we did talk about earlier today. If you were a part of the live or if you missed it, we talked about the passing of uh, Pee Wee Herman, uh, a.k.a. Why am I forgetting his name? Uh Y'all know I'm so bad with names. Ruben, what's his name? Y'all put his name in the chat. But anyway, Pee Wee Herman, the actor who pay, played Pee Wee Herman, uh, unfortunately passed away today. Well, within the past couple of days. Paul Ruben, thank you. <laughs> only, only thing that's coming to me was the Ruben. Thank you, Precious. Uh, Paul Ruben passed away. Uh, the announcement was made today. And um, so we now have news this afternoon that uh, Ianla Van Zant has also announced that her daughter has uh, passed away. Um, her daughter, uh, Nisi, Nisa, rather, Van Zant, um, and Ianla um, posted on her Instagram saying, it is with great sorrow that we announce the transition of Nisa Van Zant, uh, the youngest daughter of our beloved Ianla Van Zant, we are asking for your prayers. Please respect the privacy of her and her family at this time. Thank you. And uh, there was also an article on this as well. Uh, I think I got this from People Magazine, if I'm not mistaken, or People. And they said uh, she's announced the death of her youngest daughter. Um, and uh, the message continued. Uh, a photo was posted with the announcement, of course, with the burning candle. We saw that. And no further details uh, have been released on the circumstances sur surrounding uh, Nisa's death. They're, they haven't shared that publicly. Um, and they're saying that the death of her daughter comes uh, 20 years after the death of her daughter, Jamia. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I think I am. Um, but comes 20 years after the death of her other daughter, Jamia. And um, that daughter died from uh, colon cancer at the age of 32. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to multitask and things ain't working perfectly. There we go. Uh, she died um, of colon cancer at the age of 32 on Christmas Day of 2023. I'm sorry, on 2003. Uh, Iyanla reflected on Jamia's death when she appeared on the Making Space with um, Making Space uh, podcast in 2021. God must have really, really trusted me to give me a soul to bring into life and to trust me with the courage to send her out, uh, Iyanla said on the podcast. In 2014, uh, the Iyanla Fix My Life host recalled how she found Journals of Jamia after her death, which Ayanla said saved her life. And because it, uh, she said, because I was really ready to leave out of here. And she told Oprah that during a 2014 episode of Super Soul Sunday. And according to the Huff Huffington Post, uh, she also said, I have had so much pain in my life. I didn't think I could sustain another hour. Some of us have been there. Some of us have been there. Um, Iyanla also, um, has a son named, uh, Damon. He is 53 years old. And back in 2013, uh, Iyanla spoke further about dealing with her daughter, uh, Jamia's death. She said, I knew she was dying, but she didn't, but she didn't know. 
uh, Iyala told People at the time. And she was also quoted as saying, every day for 15 months, I cared for her. After that, what do you do? For six months, I didn't get out of bed. Relying heavily on her faith, Iyala ultimately recovered from that trying time in her life. Um, and she said, with prayer and forgiveness. And um, yeah, so condolences uh, to her, to uh, Iyala and uh, the entire Van Zandt family and close friends, et cetera. Um, I did put this poll in here. Well, there's two now, one closing out. Uh, did you hear the news of Iyala Van Zandt's uh, youngest daughter passing away? 50% of you had not heard of it. So I'm glad that I did. And not literally heard about this. I took a little power nap because I knew I would be. <laughs> we went live early. It was a whole thing. But um, when I woke up, the first thing I see on my phone is um, my best friend sending me a message uh, about Iyala. And I was like, oh, I got to now add this story in. And uh, then another story, as soon as I got up <laughs> and clicked on um, clicked on social media, I'm like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> now I got two stories. <laughs> in addition to everything else I still needed to do. But um, uh, also, I put it in here because my uh, response to my friend was, uh, oh, I thought... <laughs> I thought she only had one daughter. I didn't know she had another daughter because I've never really seen the other daughter. I have the picture here and I had to kind of dig for this. It's not like I, I didn't see like a ton of pictures. Um, and um, so I was like, I'm going to ask, am I the only one? But 63 percent of you did not know she had another daughter either. And 36 percent of you did know that she had a daughter. I knew about her son. I knew about the oldest daughter. But I did not know that she still had a living daughter. I just feel like I've never heard her mention the 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 youngest daughter, or at least not enough for it to like register with me. I don't know. So, um, but yeah, prayers and um, condolences uh, to the family. And um, yes, yeah, nothing. I always feel like it's uh, for a, a a parent burying their child. That's that's got to be rough. It's got to be rough. Pray I never, never experienced that. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to the comments if we have. Yeah, we got. Well, we got one star comment. Oh well, but that's not. <laughs> it's not related to this. Let me see if y'all saying something. Um, uh, Andrea saying, okay, read Azan, uh, Iyanla's Van Zandt's book, Priest. From broken pieces, uh, powerful. Uh, thank you for that recommendation, Don. I actually got. I'm pretty sure I have that book. I feel like I have that book and never read it. Like I got it when it was new and never read it. Yes, uh, brain on black is saying my sincere condolences. Losing a child is a different kind of pain. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Alice is saying someone mentioned it in the chat earlier. Yeah, the, um, <laughs> I was looking at my analytics. Um, I don't know. Yesterday, I think that was. And some of our chats on average, there's like uh, nearly a thousand uh, chat messages in every live, but up to six thousand in the past since we've been doing this somewhere between what well, really is higher than I think it's somewhere around fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred. Oh, that it was one that was uh, a little almost at a thousand. And that was when I went live at midnight with the uh, Jamie Foxx thing. So that's why that one was so low. But it's literally, uh, you know, uh, a couple thousand messages. So that's why I don't see. I was like, oh, that makes sense now why I miss so many of them. <laughs> I can't read a thousand messages and do all this. So that makes total sense. <laughs> uh, to give. To outlive your child is heartbreaking. So say yes, absolutely. Um, OK, so we're going to move to our next uh, story uh, question is, did you know that there was another uh, update slash twist to the Carly Russell story that just came out today? And I think it came out this afternoon because I swear when I laid down, this wasn't out. Nobody had been talking about this. <laughs> then I wake up and I'm like, what? Jesus. It's a never ending story. So her ex-boyfriend had uh, posted a message. This looks like it came from his Instagram. And he said, 
Carly's actions created hurt, confusion, and dishonesty. I was made aware of the false narrative after coming to the defense of my ex, Carly Russell. Myself and my family's nature was to react in love and genuine concern. We are disgusted from the outcome of the entire situation. I strongly feel exactly like you all, blindsided with Carly's actions. This is still an ongoing investigation, but with all of the recent information and her confession, now we gain closure with this situation. Thank you to all my friends, I'm sorry, my family, friends, and the nation for support through this. I want to also send my prayers and thanks to Miss Angela Haley Harris, her team, and all of the volunteers. For those of you who may not know, Angela Haley Harris is the mother of Ayala Blanchard. Am I saying that right? I may be mispronouncing the daughter's name, but she was unfortunately kidnapped and unalived, uh, robbed by a guy. And her mom is now an advocate and her mom got involved in this search and led the search party. So she was re-victimized by Carly in this situation. Uh, he goes on to say, thank you again for your unwavering support. The severity in this matter has not been overlooked. And I deeply respect and genuinely and genuine respect the genuine support shared during this situation. Please continue to keep us in your prayers with love, Tamar. Tamar. So you would think, okay, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. I understand. Um, that's not a you know, it's a bad situation to be pulled into. You have nothing to do with it. I get it. Um, you know, prayers go out to you and your family for, for going through that. But then there's more. <laughs> there's more. Uh, did you hear that Carly's ex-boyfriend is now hosting club parties? I don't think I pulled any pictures in, did I? I had her in here the other night. Yeah, I just cleared. I just cleared a bunch of stuff earlier today. Y'all know what she look like. Y'all know what they look like. So 76% of, you know, way more than half of you did not know that Carly's ex-boyfriend um, is now hosting club parties. That's what I'm here for. So a promoter on Instagram posted this. I forgot to look at the date, but he posted this. Hashtag Carly Russell ex-boyfriend is coming to Atlanta to find love. See the next post. Y'all ready to see the next post? <laughs> now he did all that, typing this heartfelt message he didn't been put through it and she lied to him and us and everybody else and pray for us. And it's been hard, so hard that now, and I don't know if all y'all understand what this means, but this means this man is profiting off of this situation. He is showing up at clubs, doing appearances and making money. And y'all want to know what the party was called? Tell me in the chat you want to know what the party was called. Right, Klaus Chasen. <laughs> no, that wasn't that wasn't what it was called. It should have been. Search and rescue. Search and rescue. It should be tacky and tactless. Tacky and tactless. So this is the actual uh club plugger, flyer, plugger, whatever y'all want to call it, um, for the event that he was supposed to um be at. He's just making an appearance and he's supposed to be the host. Hosting what? I don't know. I don't even know if he has those kind of skills or what. But um, the club promoter put in their post, ATL, hashtag ATL, let's help um, at T Sims find love. He is done with hashtag Carly Russell. So meet him at Reveal uh, this Thursday. Number one R&B party for sections Oh, for sections. And then he put a phone number. Hashtag party with P P B. Party with P B. Search and rescue. Search 
and rescue. Right, uh, Chanel. Child, I cannot. Y'all can put the comments, um, um, moderators. If wait, who down there? Uh, Precious and who else? Marianne. Y'all can put the comments on the screen. Um, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> then after that, he went to um, went on to start doing the um, making his rounds. So this got out. Of course, this went viral. Anything related to Car uh, Carly Russell is going to go viral at this point. So um, he went to the shade room and shade room had exclusive details that Tamar Sims seemingly pulls out of the club appearance following advice from attorneys. Uh, club promoter confirmed that Tamar will still be attending, just not posting the flyer. However, the flyer is still up. <laughs> That's where I got it from. <laughs> they ain't took that flyer down. So he ended up talking to the shade room. They had a lot more detailed information and they said uh, it is clearing the air after a flyer promoting him. Oh, he is uh, clearing the air after a, a flyer promoting him as the host for an upcoming Atlanta club appearance surfaced. The flyer was shared by the events promoter, Blake. The shade room has learned that Tamar and the event promoter were in agreement regarding his appearance and a fee was sent on the back end. The plan was seemingly set in stone um, and has changed following the promotion of the flyer on social media. Tamar exclusively tells the shade room that he didn't confirm participating in the event nor the photo used on the flyer, but did he did confirm he was in communication with the promoters about possibly doing the search and rescue event. Uh, he was quoted as saying, I don't know where this came from, but I said I would think about it, but I'm not doing the hosting at all. He's trying to backpedal. <laughs> Why would you even say you're thinking about it? That should have been just a flat out no. No, nah, this tasteless. That's not that's not a good look for me. Um, he also explained he initially told the promoter he would let him know if he would be moving forward with the hosting no later than today. In addition, he said uh, he was quoted as saying, my attorney asked if all the flyers could be removed. I'm not doing any hosting. I said I would think about it. But my attorney said, I can't do any hosting due to the situation and it's still being an open case. Did you need an attorney to tell you that? How old is this dude? Carly's what, 25, 26? He got to be in that same range. It goes on to say, although Tamar is not directly involved nor currently facing any criminal charges in his ex girlfriend uh carly russell's faux kidnapping case his attorney said hosting the event wouldn't be a good image for him at this time duh <laughs> did you need an attorney did you need somebody with a degree who's um taking the bar exam to tell you that's not a good look and tomorrow from what we can tell from what i re recall i think he's a college grad himself you don't even need to be a college grad actually you don't even need you don't even need a formal education to know this is not a good look. Tamar added that he is not interested in doing any hostings now or in the future. Well, that's what you should have said to the promoter when he first reached out to you. Not nah, I'll think about it. You saying that now because you got caught up and all the backlash. Uh, they say while it's unclear whether or not Tamar will be hosting the event anymore, the event promoter Blake has confirmed that Tamar will still be in attendance. <laughs> Tamar telling y'all one thing and he on the back end doing a whole nother thing. He didn't he didn't probably already spent that money from the promoter and he like uh no nah, I'm about to <laughs> I, I gotta fulfill my duties. <laughs> oh my god, my god, my god today. So then uh, the Neighborhood Talk also picked up the story. Uh, they said an exclusive Carly Russell's ex-boyfriend pulls out of uh, the Finding Love Club appearance uh, and is quoted as saying, attorneys say, I can't.
So he he started making his rounds uh, as well to the blogs, the big blogs. And um, so he did the the uh, shade room and then uh, the neighborhood talk and says, well, I guess he won't be. So their caption was, well, I guess he won't be finding love after all. A laughing emoji. Uh, we spoke with Tamar and he's he says his attorney claims he can't do any bookings regarding the case. Uh, so he had to cancel. So they want to know thoughts. I want to know thoughts too. Y'all let me know in this chat. <laughs> ah. mm -mm -mm. I was not expecting that. I almost, I thought we were done. I know I didn't. No, I didn't. Let me quit lying. I can't lie to y'all. I did not think we were done. I wasn't really expecting this. <laughs> I didn't think we were done. That was another reason I, I played the videos I played for y'all earlier today. Cause I was like, you know, Keep it going, because I already know something else is going to happen. <sighs> um, somebody needs to knock on Tamar and Carly's heads uh, to get like the three students. This is foolery. Yeah, uh, Chanel, this is... Um, yeah, yeah, we know we are not done. This is... Th this ain't over. This ain't over. Uh, if Corny was a person. Yeah, I'm like... So, so, um, wow. I guess tomorrow of uh, love will not be appearing on Zeus. I believe that at some point he's going to pop up trying to get on one of these reality shows. I can, it, based on this behavior, I can so see it. I can so see it. So he's going to wait for the dust to clear a little bit more and he's going to come back out and be doing something. And especially if his, um, reputation is already getting dragged from even considering this and being, being put into this at a certain point you're gonna be like well my reputation already mud so i might as well so yeah craziness craziness um let's see so did you hear so the poll i'm closing out did you hear that carly's uh ex-boyfriend was now hosting club parties uh 23% of you had heard, 77% of you had not uh, heard anything about it. All right. Uh, what is this saying here? Um, Melinda is saying, do you think the boyfriend knew about her plan? Uh, he, off he offered that she had been tortured. Why did he say that? Well, he's explained that he, he said what she told him. Everyone did. The mom, the, the family repeated what she told him. What what she told them, rather, um, I honestly don't think he had anything to do with the the hoax uh, kidnapping. But I definitely believe he has something to do with like, oh, well, she drugged me into this and I'm going to capitalize off of that. I do believe, um, obviously, at, at this point. But, yeah, I don't believe uh, he had anything to do with it. Personally, I don't. Um. Okay, well, with that, I'm going to play us into um, our next segment. I just realized I'm having issues with stuff around here, so let me see if this will work. Uh, I should have been doing this a second ago. Oh, come over here. Everything working so slow. Here we go. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. And live. Okay, that ain't. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Almost there, almost there. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna play y'all a quick commercial. And Darius myself, Cooks, also known as your. Get myself adjusted and uh, we'll come back with more shenanigans. Now I gotta get all this stuff off screen though.
local scammer. You are, you know, you gay, grown up in Chicago, you just end up being with a tribe of people. I don't know, it's really hard to explain. I, it might be different now, but when I was growing up, there were crews. We had people we hung with, right? Anyway, and I hung with people like, you remember Calvin, Lavelle, you know, those are people that I used to hang with back in the day, and you see what happened now, especially with randomness of veil. We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? Come to think of it, let me not bring his name up, because let me tell you something. He probably, child, he ready to, where's the expose? Where is the expose? So they don't know what's about to go on. You just attack them. You just attack them up. What did I say? I said, you better do what I said to do. Did they think you're crazy? If they think you're crazy, they'll just walk away slowly like that. All right, I am back. Uh, let's see. I actually saw I'm missing a lot of comments, and I'm not sure if my moderators are busy. Um, so I was trying to see what we had um okay we got two start let's see um this one here minister anetta edwards i have a question i was denied on Vail's facebook page why um one thing that could be possible i'm not aware um and usually well sometimes the moderators approve people but most of the time uh it's auto um it's, it's set automatically that if you don't answer all of the questions it's going to deny you um, and then there are other perimeters like your page can't be brand new and it's to avoid bots and trolls and all of that. So, um, it could be one of those things. I would say message me, um, using the link above, you can DM me or message me on Facebook or something, and then let me know your name. And then I can look for it when it comes through and then, uh, override anything. But most, most of the approvals are, are autopilot, auto automatic um no one is manually doing it but there are certain criteria you got to answer all the questions if you don't answer all the questions it'll automatically not approve you uh and also if your account doesn't fit uh the parameters of being established etc um not like brand new so i have had a couple people who literally started facebook pages uh to follow me uh, and i appreciate that but they had to let me know so that i could override the thing that doesn't allow brand new accounts to join so hopefully we can figure it out just message me you can also text me in the VIP text community as well, uh, if that might be easier for you. Uh, and give me a while to get to you, because <laughs> I get a lot of messages. Might take me a couple of days sometimes. Uh, but right now, my message is kind of low uh, in that group. I, I've, I was working on them over the weekend, so that'd be a good place. Michelle Duncan, I'm convinced he was a narcissistic man that drove her crazy because uh, the F is this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Jackie, always in the damn bed. Yeah, talking about Darius Cooks, a.k.a. Darius uh, Cooks, Crooks, rather. Uh, Jenea is saying, Vel, he brought you up this morning, too. Yep, and I got it. And it will be content. Uh, it was going to be content today, but then I had these two stories pop up, so I couldn't do what I needed to do because I have to edit it down to make it work. It's coming. <laughs> It's good too. Ooh, my clapback is good. <laughs> ah. uh, Precious G is saying you asked and you <laughs> you've been receiving ever since. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 
ever since I know you see it. Oh, yeah. And that reminds me. I have a couple um, GIFs or GIFs that I'm working on. Again, it's like I, I need time. So on moving forward on Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm only doing night shows. Uh, that'll give me time to work on some stuff during the day because today would have been a great day and tomorrow I got stuff to do uh, besides going live with y'all. But um, it would have been a great day for me to work on this stuff. But this is one of them. Is this the one? I didn't label it. I think this is. No, I think it's this one. Let me see. <laughs> So that's one I'm working on. Um, it's, it's a few more. It's a few more. This one. Oh, it played too quick. I actually have that one at the beginning of the circus uh, break commercial with all the, the slideshow. I need to, for one, I don't know. What, it's hard for me to find it. I labeled it something that I, it's not easy for me to find. I know I got it. So I got to find that because I wanted to tweak that and add some new photos in it and all of that. Um, but yeah, we got, we got a few things around here, a few things we're working on. Just got to have time. That's all. I'm only one man. But when I get time, oh boy, when I get time, let's see. I think he's, uh oh, what happened? I think he still wish Vail was his friend. Oh, please. Neither one of us, uh, are, are wish to be in each other's lives. <laughs> I'm very confident about that at this point. Maybe he does in the sense of maybe <laughs> I wouldn't have my foot on his neck <laughs> and know so much. That's why you got to be careful who you step on on your way up the ladder, because those are the same people you see, you know, on your way back down. And I think that's what we're seeing here. And I didn't know. I didn't plan this. It just it was a calling. I ended up in this position and I'm like, OK, God, I hear you. She's chosen, says he just went live as soon as the trailer came on. Oh, again, he was just live um, cooking or something. What time is it? Maybe he's about to uh, get high off his edible. Uh, the expose of Scampa Crooks. I like that. I'm gonna keep that. Keep that. Um, that could be. That could be one of the episodes. Um. Okay, so we're so what we're gonna do is the uh, basically the. Uh, Crook and review. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still still struggling with, with the title. But um, this week, well, I'm, I'm really it's last week moving into this week. So from last week into the weekend, uh, some of the things that have occurred in Crooklyn, Crooklyn, some of the things that have occurred in Crooklyn is the uh, he's really been heavily announcing and priming um, everyone for his. Uh, latest ventures. He's been talking about a few, but one that I have here. I'm like, I can't find nothing. <laughs> Is the uh, Southern Fried, I'm sorry, Southern Fish Company. I know we mentioned it because I think people were saying things in the chat. I'm not sure that I read it to y'all, though. I don't think I read the post, though. I don't think. But anyway, here's the post uh, from Darius Crooks. Um, he says, FYI, the Southern Fish Company is a new concept. It is our, it is, it's not a tour or temporary situation. I'm getting back into the restaurant business. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be very interesting because I am going to do the um, whole situation with um, talking about the, the Greens and Gravy, Soul Crab Atlanta, Soul Crab Chicago. And we're going to also review those restaurants basically by re reading the reviews from when they were open. And then we're going to talk about all the receipts I got on stuff that happened, et cetera. So I I'm curious of when this happens, because I, I, I can believe that he's going to open up at least, you know, one or two or something. These are going to be some interesting scenarios and uh, content for us. I guarantee you that. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Anyway, he says, I know, I know. I said I would never open another restaurant. I guess I should have said I would never open another full service restaurant. This, these will be carry out only. No dine in. I need a fish joint in like every city. 
Don't worry. We will document the process via video. Of course, everything's content. We know that. You ain't got to tell us that. You documented the other ones too. I got those videos too. <laughs> when he was um, in the building, build out stages for, um, what was that? Soul Crab, Atlanta. I don't have, I don't think I got um, Grits and Gravy. Greens and Gravy, whatever it was. Um, and I also have Soul Crab Chicago. Yes, we have that. But the first uh, locations have, but the first locations have to be Houston, then Brooklyn. Why not Atlanta, though? You, I mean, you've been established there for a decade. Why not Atlanta? Hmm. Hmm. Wouldn't it make sense? I mean, his warehouse is still in Atlanta because the warehouse, you don't need a business license. Remember that you don't need approval from the state in order to have a warehouse. You're just renting a space. That's like renting an apartment. You don't need a license to rent an apartment. However, if you wanted to open up a restaurant, even carry out, not just dine in, that requires licenses from municipalities within the state of Georgia. But why, why not? You're very well established there. You already have a multi-million dollar uh, you know, warehouse that you're renting with millions of dollars in product per you. Why wouldn't you open a restaurant there? Is it perhaps because the state of Georgia said that um, you have to go, that you can never open any businesses there? Give us all of your current licenses. Thank you. Did they snatch them? Thank you. Do you currently have a judgment that is uh, active that they're watching your every move thank you perhaps is that why you have relocated to houston to open up a business and in brooklyn but from what our people are saying they're saying that houston ain't in texas ain't gonna play with you but we'll see. We'll see. Because I hear a lot of talk from I hear a lot of talk from from the peanut gallery people. Like, oh, somebody gonna get him, and uh, oh, if he do that to my people, or they gonna do that. I'm like, this dude been uh, harassing people for over a decade across the country, and I ain't seen nobody do nothing but talk. <laughs> so y'all show me that y'all city ain't gonna put up with it. Show me. Don't keep telling me. Show me. Anyway, so he says, but first locations have to be Houston then B Brooklyn. Okay. Oh, Houston, Carolina pound cake company will have a brick and mortar. Everybody else. Don't worry. We will be shipping over 30 flavors of pound cakes. Charlotte, you're, you're up next for a brick and mortar pound cake joint. Timeline. Look for early 2025. I need a quick six month vacation first. That's because he's gotten a vacation from the dining with Darius Cooks events because they're not selling out anymore. So he's not trying to do that grift next year. That's that's done. He's done with y'all with that. It, 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 these tables are empty. Nobody's showing up. We got a picture uh, from this from this weekend. Nobody's showing up to that to that stuff anymore. So that grift is over. Uh, so we got to move on to the new ones. But it's interesting how um, Carolina Pound Cake Company, again, it was open in Atlanta. He had a bakery. He had a, well, he had a, a, a little space um, to make the cakes. Why let that get closed down? Why let the state of Georgia shut it down? If you, if you want it, you already had it. And you're a great business person. So why not just keep it? And did you ever get those pots and pans out of there? Or you have to buy all that stuff all over again? Or is it still in there? The last time I went about it, it was still in there. And that was months after it had got closed by the state of Georgia. So, so for those of you who don't know, and we're not doing deep dive, not deep dive. But for those of you who don't know, not only did the state of Georgia take the licenses for Soul Crab Chicago, I'm sorry, Soul Crab Atlanta and Greens and Gravy. And we got the judgment. I got, look, look. We doing kitchen table talk because I know people keep thinking. Some people, hold on, let me think, let me think where I'm going. Some people think that this is just a lot of talk. Just oh, they just talking, and he oh, he quick to say, 
they they be lying and they stories don't make sense to uh, y'all. Don't pay no attention to them. They just over there talking. Yeah, we're talking about facts. That's all we talk about over here is facts. So what I'm doing now, and it looks crazy because I'm looking at y'all, but I ain't looking at y'all. That's because I'm looking at my screen, digging through the crates, digging through the crates to let's see. We went now to the Darius Cooks tab. We went to our we're in our Darius Cooks uh, uh, external hard drive. I told you I got about 42 terabytes for those of you who know how big that is um, of data space for this. Uh, we have the businesses. I'm under my business files. Now I'm going to go down because y'all know I read y'all the businesses the other day, right? Um, when y'all took me over into almost four hours. Uh, where are we going? Where was I going? Oh, we're going to above 701 and we're going to do the uh, final judgment. I'm just putting this one document up because I think people just think, you know, we want to make sure we're all on the same page. It's blocking my view. Um, but this is what we're going to go through. I think this is an 18 page document. And this document between um, the state of Georgia, uh, Christopher Carr was the attorney general at that time. I'm not sure if he still is. Um, and it's uh, above 701 Inc., um, the corporation and Darius Williams, the individual. So not just the business. They both got, got this final consent judgment and permanent injunction. Permanent. Get the F out of here. And it breaks it down. It breaks it down and literally not only specifies what he has confessed to because it was harder for him to avoid. It not only explains the one hundred and seventy five thousand um, um, dollar basically restitution that he had to pay. It's another word. I think they called it. But not only explain that, but then broke down where he's held accountable, what he can and can't do. The fact that they were taking all of his active business licenses in the state of Georgia and that he could not run businesses in the state of Georgia. Again, he's able to get around the, uh, cause some people think they lie cause his warehouse in Atlanta. Well, you don't need a business license to be in Atlanta. I mean, to, um, a business license to have a warehouse. You do need a business license to have certain other businesses like restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why they all got shattered. So I said, all of y'all know I go way around and I get us right back to where we started. Carolina Pound Cake Company was being, it was, uh, Palma, his former head baker, called it the Trap Bakery. And the reason she was calling it that it was because it was underground. It never had, uh, it had, it was incorporated because he had it under the umbrella of his business, but it never had health inspections. It was never a licensed business. He ran, he just, why you would run something that big and you're selling stuff across the nation and shipping it out and posting everything on social media? Why you wouldn't have a legitimate business setup for that is beyond me. The liability alone. Um, but he was, oh, hey, Palma Palma's in the chat. Um, Miracles, Miracle and Blessings Cake Company is Palma. That is Darius Crooks, uh, former head baker. When you had the cakes and they were actually good, that's when she was there. When they was bad again, that's because she was gone. <laughs> when they was dry, those dry ones, before they, you know, if they didn't dry from the cellophane ripping off of them and confetti being on them and all that other foolishness. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, Palma actually has her own uh, bakery uh, and she ships across the country. So hit her up. Y'all can add her in, in this chat too. I, I know y'all can do that now. Um, Palmer, put your information in. Yeah, put your link in the chat uh, for me, Palmer. But anyway, um, so he was running the chap trap bakery in. Um, and when all of this went down and people reported it, uh, the health inspectors, they shut the business down. Now, what he claimed, we got this too. We got receipts for everything. We got this timeline. What he claimed at the time was that he... Um, was that he was overwhelmed with all of his other multiple businesses and he was taking a little break with the Carolina Pound Cake Company. No, it had got shut down. Like the, they caught up with him, shut it down. It was like, Negro, if you come back up in here, you got problems for real. And so he left it alone. There were still people. We got these receipts, too. There were still customers, because, again, when you have to shutter something like that. There were orders that people had placed 
that they never got because the business no longer existed. And he wasn't going to go out of his way to bake them in his kitchen to make sure these things got shipped out. And so that was it. That was It was gone. Palmer was gone. He couldn't keep employees because he's a horrible employer. He tried to, I got, I ain't going to go that deep with that. But he tried to say he's obviously not a, a bad employer because he currently has staff and, and they're like a family. He treats them well and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, uh, yeah, that's how narcissists work. Um, when you're in their good graces, they will treat you well. You will be like family. Uh, all of us, all of us who have known you in the past have that same story <laughs> until it wasn't. <laughs> oh, my God, he's such a grifter. <laughs> like everybody who knows him. Um, um, Danny Rose, a.k.a. Stovetop, Stovetop Kisses, who you scammed. She had a great story about you, too. Uh, you guys were so close that she went into business with you. If you were a horrible human being to her in the very inception, y'all would have never became friends. She would have never trusted you to uh, with her intellectual property of her center treats um, and giving you the recipe. And she would have never gone into business with you as supposedly an investor. And then you underhandedly took her business. Because she had a good time with you, just like your current Minions are having a good time with you. That's how it works. I understand the grift. Anyway, so um, he's again, we see here with this post, he is. Um, <laughs> I got to get this organized, y'all. I, I literally have to take a day where I can just get this stuff organized because this is ridiculous. I'm like, I can't even find where I just left off at. Let me see. Let me see. Here we go. Is this it? Yes. OK. Um, but yeah, so we can see here he's making all these plans. So now he's talking about two fish fry joints. He's talking about reopening the Carolina Pound Cake Company uh, with a brick and mortar. And now he, really, that's two locations. So he's talking about four because when you're talking about locations in different states, those are different businesses completely. Four new businesses on top of everything else he's doing that he's not doing well, I might add. Now, we know that the Dining with uh, Darius events will go away because, again, that grift is now fading out. It's not working the way that it did before because he's been outed and people aren't interested in just giving their money. Uh, no, I would say as many people. It's not as profitable for him. So he's walking away from that one as he does every, every business that he has that fails. Because every business that he has does fail. <laughs> I think this 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 um, cookware e-commerce thing, though, is your best grift yet, honestly, because if you look at everything else you've done, they've all floundered. This one looks like a good grift because for the most part, it's just, you know, you order, you know, stuff at, you know, a fraction of the cost of what you're charging them. Uh, your your thing is just ship out a decent amount of them. So the Ponzi scheme continues to work. Uh, although now we're starting to see again people saying they aren't receiving their orders and these order number things it's, it's the same thing but this griff is working for you so keep it up good good work um then we have the um d hive they get into the chat or uh, the comments and they and they you know everything's perfect oh my god he's amazing he's he's so brilliant he's talking about opening four different businesses on top of the stuff he has going on that is obviously floundering because people keep complaining of all these issues they're ignoring all of that but jk says we need one in detroit they want one in detroit uh he says i'll be there uh it'll be tough there but i can handle it tough why <laughs> and then um another d hiver says tough um and then this other one, Nicole, says, you can for sure. Because to Nicole, he can do everything. Because Nicole listens to his every word and believes his every grift. Uh, and then Jacqueline says, Darius, if you're looking for excellent management, hit me up. I'm tough too. And excellent qualifications. Jacqueline, I pray that you get a job with him. Because when you get that job with him, you'll finally see that what everyone has been saying, including all of his past employees, all of them is true. <laughs> Here's the thing about his past employees when you really think about it. 
all of the ones who have talked about him have said how horrible of a person he is behind the scenes or they go silence and silent and say nothing. You never see a former employee defend him. You never see an or 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 business um, associate come out and say, no, Darius is actually a great guy. You never see that. Why is that? Why is that? I mean, that just hit me. That's interesting. Why isn't Madeline, his former photographer, his food photographer, who was with him for five plus years, who was cackling in the background as people, as he was, what's your order number? And when um, Andrew Caldwell was really reading Darius for filth and telling a lot of truths, he had, you know, some of the stuff all mixed up, but he was telling the truth at, at the same time. And Darius is, you know, making a mockery of it. And Madeline is just cackling in the background. Oh, ha, 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 he pays me. Ha, 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 ha. Next thing you know, fast forward. Because I said, you'll be cackling until you ain't. And sure enough, because again, I know this, this grifter very, very well. Very well. Um, his nature. I'll say that. His nature. Next thing you know, fast forward. What was that? Hmm, maybe it was eight months or so. Eight months to a year. Fast forward. All of a sudden, he's on his IG lies talking about how him and Madeline aren't um, working together anymore. And she said something to him that made him have to go there and that he couldn't disclose um, what he said to her because she made him come out of character. She made him come out of character. Sounds like such a narc, such a narcissist, such a narcissist. This woman made you come out of your character. Okay. Because you never snap on people. You've never done that. That's not in your nature. What? One day I'm just have everything at a, really I need a good program where at a, at a push of a button, I just pull it all up. Every receipt, every video clip. <laughs> Be like, let's watch this. Let's watch this now. Um, we have Veronica. This, we're still talking about the um, the fish fry place joint. Uh, Veronica says, "Are you saying we're? Uh, are you saying we are back cooking, friend in Chicago?" So there's somebody he must know from Chicago. There's people in Chicago who have only seen that one side of Darius because of the fact that they uh, he hasn't grifted them. They weren't close enough for him to grift. They're you know his uh, friends for ish and giggles kind of thing. So there are some people who were around when I was around and then they just bought into whatever his narrative. I, I talked to one person. Uh, well, we're, we're cool. Um, it took us years to talk about the situation, like 10 years to talk about the situation. But when we finally talked about it, because we were still like Facebook friends, associates friendly, but we just never talked about it. The fact that we both were friends with Darius. I didn't know if that person was still with friends with Darius or not. I just didn't want to go there. And we, when I started talking, they <laughs> hit me up just like everybody else. Like, guess what he did to me? It's like, oh, no, for real? And um, we got to comparing notes or whatever. And they told me that when Darius stopped talking to me and the other, his best friend from high school, this person was like, I was shocked because they knew how close we were. And they said that Darius just played it off like, um, he didn't say much. He didn't go into, into detail at all. He just said that we kind of fell out over business, over the business deal. And it's like, no, 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 no. He scammed us. <laughs> he scammed us. So um, anyway, so this Veronica person might be somebody I even knew or met or whatever. I'm bad with names. Y'all know that. Um, but he's responding. You already know you about to gain the weight you lost. Love you. Um, and then Veronica says, uh, no, sir, but it's on, friend. I can't wait to start advertising. Going to be pulling people into the lion's den. Just because, you know, their experience is not our experience. So, um, oh, so how many, where am I at with my, hold on, what is that? It's a little out of order. Oh, no, it's not. I just didn't scroll down. Here we go. Put this poll in here. How many of you remember me? Uh, how many of you watched, I should say, 
when I read the post that Darius did listing out his employees criminal charges uh, from a recent incident. So his current chef, Darren, was in a car accident and Darius, um, you know, posted about it to make his D-Hive aware. And in the post, Darius went into detail of the guy's criminal history, et cetera. And um, I mean, the D-Hive seemed okay with it for the most part, but you know, from the public perspective, there was some backlash. But interested if 50 looks like about 58% of you. It's, all, it's almost half and half. Uh, Jesus, this is why I need to be able to pull stuff up easy. Uh, oh, y'all give me a minute. Give me. Let me play a quick commercial because I really, for the, because it's half of y'all did not see it, I want to be able to read it so that you understand what's happening next uh, in this storyline. So give me a commercial break and. Do y'all remember when I did it? That would help me find it quicker. <laughs> what day? What day was that? Um, but anyway, I'm gonna play this for y'all real quick, and I'll be right back. My partner like Reef. Dime lo porque o no entiendo. Mi gente must really need Jesus. He said, Real blood, I never seen a crypt, and I believe it. It's too easy. Too, too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. Too, it's too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. Just talk, don't live it And just took that route, that scenic And I'm so outspoken like reason Jimmy Neutron, boy, young jeans And I'm a self-made man 
All right, I'm back. I got nervous, man. It was taking me forever. Oops, and it's it's not an overlay, but whatever. We'll work with it. Um, <laughs> so I did finally find it. Uh, so on last week, um, his one of his chefs, sous, uh, sous chefs, was uh in an unfortunate car accident, and Darius uh told his followers uh the story in um in detail and so i'm gonna read that and then it'll lead us into where we're at uh says in full transparency i wanted to let you guys know that my chef darren has been arrested here's what i know and he bullets it <laughs> he's gonna let you know everything you know for the public now remind keep in mind keep in mind that when darius posts Tens of thousands of people see this. And generally, when he posts, he posts on both his Facebook, which at least on paper has over one point something million uh, followers, and also on his Instagram that's ha that ha had 666,000 uh, followers. Uh, and then even this post I just noticed had, and probably has more than that now, but when I took this screenshot, it had 1,000 basically 2000 comments and 57 shares and 13,000 likes. Well, or, you know, uh, responses. So this man's business has now gone out to tens of thousands of people who don't even know him. And this is the level of detail that his employer gave. Are those likes that low? The likes are pretty low compared to who watching. <laughs> we got half of, so we got 310 watching and 174 likes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, please like if you haven't as of yet. Thank you so much, um, Sonia Charlie, for the uh, super stick. I really appreciate you, friend. For, um, I'm going to read this and then um, let's be at 250 by the time I'm done. Uh, that way. I don't need to take a break uh, in order for us to get those get those likes up. But thank you. Thank you in advance. Um, so he says, Here what, here's what I know. Uh, he was driving home to St. Louis. It's number one. Number two, he was in Coffee County, Tennessee, and fell asleep at the wheel. Number three, he ended up in a ditch and was able to crawl out. Number four, by the time authorities arrived, they assisted, I'm sorry, they assessed the situation and realized Darren was driving under the influence. This is important for the public to know. Number five, after searching him and the vehicle, they found more drugs, more, more drugs, and enough to charge him with intent to distribute. That's a heavy charge. Why we need to know this, I don't know. I don't know. Are we trying him? Is he in our court of law? Um, number seven, his bond requires $14,000 cash or a bondsman, but that would require a property bond in, uh, Coffee County. No one knows anyone that lives there. That was number seven. Number eight, the jail is going to allow him to call me at 6 PM. He says, this is all the information I have. Good Lord. I'm glad you ain't got more because we would have had that too. Want to give us a shoe size, underwear size? What waist is he? Jesus. Inseam? He says, yes, I'm upset. I'm more disappointed in him. Darren just turned 26, and he's already done a four-year sentence. I, can, I think the only thing missing from this is his social security number and credit score. From what I can see. He says, he was rough around the edges. Oh, okay, let's insult him, too. But I exposed him to a life many dream about, a life of scamming, harming people. He says, he reached out to me about working for me when I was looking for a chef. He didn't know I would hire ex-cons. We, we, I told y'all that that was a lie. We, we talked about that. But I'll, I'll, you know, we'll, I'll give some receipts and deep dive on that too. He didn't have any food photos on his IG. When I asked him, he said, give him a day. The next day, 
His work was on display. I know his heart. He's a good kid. He never gave me any issues and accepted my correction like the student he was. Now it's past tense, <laughs> like good riddance. But you know he'll use you up and, and spit you out. Says, obviously, this is hard for all of us. Obviously not that hard for you because you're just putting this man business out there. Says, I'm not sure what the future holds, but I built this brand and transparency and when you don't see him around, questions will flow. See how he made it about him? That's a narcissist. Please keep, like, why does it got to be about you and your business at all? He says, please keep him in your pr in prayer. The charges, all five of them. Oh, we got to know how many charges he got, too. In his previous legal battles and his previous legal battles, oh, we got to know there's a record there, may not bode well for him. Part of me feeling like he was wishing it wouldn't. He says, and as his boss, my heart now turns to the four other members of the traveling team to ensure their morale stays lifted. Their morale should be, let me get the L out of here before he starts telling my business to everybody too. <laughs> More than he already has, because he are, honestly, he does it. This is this on a deeper level. Um, but even with all of that, hold on, my note program crashed on me and closed. I'm in the wrong show notes now. Hold on. Technology is not my friend today. Well, I have moved it. That's what I'm clicking on the wrong one. Now the program won't take all day. But um, so what happened after that was um, obviously at some point, Darren got out. And what I realized, I was rushing, so I couldn't pull it in here. Um, but um, Darren did get out. Um, I guess he was able to bond out. Don't know how Darius Crooks will share what Darius Crooks wants to share. So I don't know if they finagled something. He might have had a follower who did live in that county or was able to hook somebody up and do something. He you know, that's what happens when you have um, you have a large following. So who knows? But Darren is out. So Darius posted on his social media a picture of himself. And Darren in the back, cheesing, big smile. I'm like, did Darren ever see uh, the post that you put out there with all his business? He may have, and he don't know no better. But also, also, I could see him being in a position that even if he was bothered by this, um, Darius pays them fairly well. And you got to keep in mind, again, he said that he, Darren didn't know that uh, he hires ex-cons. So Darius hires ex-cons. We know most of us know that it is not easy for uh formerly incarcerated i think was the word y'all taught me i forgot who taught me formerly incarcerated we know that it is not easy for the formerly incarcerated to find um employment and especially employment where they make a decent salary and from what darius crooks tells us he pays them i think somewhere around forty thousand. that seems like his magic number because that was what he paid his um well, when he paid, <laughs> but that was when he, <laughs> that was the salary of his um, his uh, management staff at the restaurant as well. Um, so that seems like his magic number. Don't know why. So he pays them around that amount. And we do know. Well, I'm assuming that travel is involved when they go on these trips. We do know that when he takes them out to eat, he's usually paying because he's forcing them to eat what he wants them to eat um, for content. So, I mean, there are some perks and that's not an easy situation to find yourself in. And he gets to smoke weed and drink and like they all do drugs and they get to, you know, have these little dinner dinner parties. I'm being kinder of people. Some people probably know. So I'm sure I'm getting comments. I'm trying to get better and not dragging constantly in every <laughs> in every topic. Um, so I'm yeah, I'm trying not to. Anyway, um, We'll talk about that on Patreon. <laughs> but we know that, um, you know, he has, they have those dinner parties. And then afterwards, they're free to, they play cards, they smoking weed, they drinking, they get to hang out at the club, they get to come back with a hangover. And as long as they can get themselves moving by, I guess, 11 or noon or whatever, before they start cooking these meals, they cooking the same stuff at every 
uh, location uh, for years now. Uh, so that ain't complicated. I mean, they literally are pretty sure doing it in their sleep. It's like an assembly line. It's like they work at McDonald's. It's a sit down McDonald's. It's a, it's a um, glorified McDonald's meal. So just like that don't take no real effort uh, to make a McDonald's burger when you work for McDonald's. So th that's a pretty, it's, you know, if you can, and every job has its negatives. We all know that. We've all, some of y'all are still in corporate America. Some of us have been in corporate America, et cetera. Even being an entrepreneur, there are pros and cons to every job. And for the most part, it looks like the biggest con to that job for a person who loves to cook like that would be working for a, a narcissist uh, who's also a scammer. But if you haven't experienced though, that part of them yet, um, you know, this is not a bad deal. So I can see how he could his boss could put that much information out about him and versus him saying, I ain't coming back. Him saying, I'm going to go back and deal with this because, hey, <laughs> that's some good money um, until I and I get I need money for an attorney now and all of that. So I can see that. So anyway, he's on the camera. I hate I didn't pull that in, but uh, maybe uh, Foolishness Friday, I'll make sure to pull it in. But he's in the background and, and Crooks is cheesing, saying he's back. And um, and then that's it. So then Darren post, I don't know if it was the same day, later that day. Um, they were in Memphis, if I'm not mistaken, y'all. Y'all let me know in the chat if you know. Uh, I think they were in Memphis. And Darren posted on his Instagram and he posted this. Things I wonder. And he has a picture of the home that they are at, the Airbnb or the Verbo or the whoever, wherever he's renting this um, house for the Dining with Darius Cooks events. Um, it's posted. And then Darren, uh, he geotags it. So Darren and geotagging it gave the location of where Darius Crooks was currently having the Dining with Darius Crooks event. For, for that particular evening. And maybe the you know next two nights or however many days he was there. And um, Darius Crooks claimed that, I don't know if Charles is in here tonight, but just like Darius Crooks loves to say. So uh, I think Charles shared this uh, in, in, the, in the group saying like, look at what Darren did basically. And he didn't put the... the put the address of where they're at or, you know, geotag where they're at. Well, Darius ran to his D hive to tell them that Darren used, I'm sorry, that Charles used this photo that Darren had posted and figured out what house it was and tracked it and then put the address out there. And that's just not what happened. However, I'm, I'm thinking that Darius cooks knew that that wasn't what occurred. And like I've seen him do before, I'm like, let me watch the time. I'm like, I still, we still got a whole nother story left, a big one. But as he's done before, and we're going to get into, as he's done even with me, where he just makes up an entire narrative to give to his D-Hive so that they can then harass, he six them on a, a person to cyber bully them. And I believe that that was really what he was do trying to do because he, he picked out Charles of all the people who speak about him because there's tons, but Charles stays on him constantly about his uh, lack of quality of food and knowing how to cook and, and all of that. And so he's trying to get, he's always trying to silence whoever the selected person is at the time. So anyway, this was also a picture that, um, that Darren posted. So he posted these three. It was this one. And um, maybe it was two. It was this one and then the interior. And this is inside of the home in East Memphis. And as we can see, I don't know how well y'all can see that, but there's the uh, Kool-Aid Sangria uh, Rubbermaid container sitting on the uh, dining table that probably came with the house. I'm sure it did. Um, as you can also see, and we've been talking about um, this you know, I've been alluding to it and, and mentioning it here or there 
We're going to do a deep dive about the Dining with Darius Crooks situation uh, and the evolution of it, deep diving. But we can see here even that this is showing an event that is not quite that packed. You can, you can, you can see from this picture that these events are, are the, the, the attendance is getting slimmer and slimmer with every post. So there was a question that I saw on social media. I'll leave that up for a second. The question I started to see people raise on social media, and I, I didn't, I hadn't thought about it until, um, was did Darren do this on purpose? Was this an underhanded way? And this is, you know, this is all opinion based, this part of it. Do you think that Darren posted this on purpose? Like he's come back, he's found out that his boss did that. And he's like, I know you hate when people know where we're at. Let me just accidentally on purpose show where we're at. <laughs> so Darius then responded on his social media saying, again, he got to create the narrative. He got to create, you know, make it something that it wasn't. Memphis, I hate to say this and please know I'm not scared of y'all. But Cozy Corner um, Barbecue ain't it. Um, what a one place, what the one place I need to go to tomorrow with amazing barbecue. Oh, that was something on the side. That's him insulting um, another. I don't know. This, this fool kills me. We're going to these various cities and insisting, telling them and dictating to them whose food is the best across the country. His opinion is the only one that matters. Oh, um, Memphis, y'all don't know how to make no barbecue sauce or, or, uh, or um, mal sauce. And uh, what did he say? He was talking about donuts at some point. And he was like, so-and-so uh, city, they ain't got no good donuts there and da-da-da. And I'm like, who made you the expert on what donuts taste the best? I'm like, it's show for one, it's narcissism, clear to all of us. Um, but the other piece of, of it is just a lack of um, knowledge in general, because we all have different taste buds. We literally, some of us have uh, taste buds that are more attracted to salty, some more attracted to sweet. Some of us can't quite tell the difference between the two. I learned this in, in um, through training from, from my former job. Like we literally had these sweet and salty wafers you put in your mouth and you would uh, you know, sit it on your tongue and you would describe what it was. And people were finding out in that moment, some people couldn't taste the sweet at all. Some people couldn't taste the salt, you know, all of that. And so what, what I like might not be what you like, but that don't mean it's horrible. That don't mean a whole state of y'all. Uh, I can go to any, I can go to um, Texas and tell y'all that y'all barbecue ain't ish. Cause I like Chicago barbecue better. Well, hell I was raised on it. Maybe I will prefer it better. Like what? It's so it's insulting to me to hear him dictate to people. Like he's just the expert, his taste buds, his one lonely, um, you know, big boy stuck in a bariatric body. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. <laughs> taste buds are the set the tone. For taste buds across the country. What the hell? Foolishness. So let's see with this poll. <laughs> 83, dang, I ain't expect to be this much. 83% of y'all think he did it on purpose. It is very odd because of the fact that that's something that Darius is very secretive about to the point that the, the D Hive doesn't even know the locations of these places until the hours before. <laughs> they don't know where they're going. And speaking of that, that's always been an issue. There are always people forever who are saying, I didn't get the address. I didn't get the email. Um, did you send the email yet? All of these things. Or I sent that I didn't get the email. You never responded. Well, he's not going to respond. He sends out this random email. And I think he must manually do it or something because it is just ridiculous how many people don't get the email to the location therefore they spent their 
And in this case, the people who booked a year ago, they were paying $289. The ones who he's selling to today, and this shows you how much of a um, how much of a grift it is for one, because he was charging two eighty nine, but also how much how desperate he is to try to fill some seats, because now he's selling the same tickets for a hundred dollars, and it, it's just crazy. So these people are not getting the information, not getting the address, and then he ghosts them and he blocks them when it's over, and they say they didn't get. The or he blames it on them. Well, it's your fault. And I'm like, as many of us, many of us, we go places, we buy concert tickets, we do dinner events. I've done dinner events at other places. We've we've done these things, and we know the technology makes this stuff foolproof if you use it properly. And he's supposed to be a guru of business and master classes and technology and social media and all of that. I'm like, why doesn't he have something as simple as a, a text group? Why can't it go in email and text? Why do people got to check emails for that? And it should be automated. Again, something like a, a, a Eventbrite would have been a great platform for this. He did. He used to use it. I told y'all that. But he scammed on it <laughs> and, and didn't fulfill his whole 2026 20, rest of his calendar. They had to refund over ninety some thousand dollars to people. And they went after him for the 90 some thousand. We don't know what exactly happened um, with that, but he got kicked off of Eventbrite. I think if he was on Eventbrite, that issue would probably be eliminated, potentially. But as of this week, and I think this was, yeah, this was from the Memphis, uh, this person says, and their name has been blocked out in their emoji. Somebody did this. I, I usually don't do this for, for the have. I'm like, it's already on a public platform. It's on social media. Like tens of thousands of people are already seeing it. No need for me to spend my extra time um, Photoshopping nothing. <laughs> it's already there. Anyway, they say, I promise I'm in my email and I see nothing but Nashville and Memphis. Um, and the email will come hours before. I cannot believe I missed it. I have... I have checked and checked and checked. I see nothing. I'm so hurt. I mean, they keep acting like we just making this stuff up over here. <laughs> well, every, you know what I'm saying? The, pe the people who shared this stuff before, the coalition. We just making it up. But yet you keep seeing these things. And I, I had mentioned, I think that was, well, we went on last night. On, on Friday, I think I mentioned saying, hey, are, are, are people still getting scammed with the with the um, the uh, cookware, the ordering, like I hadn't heard nothing really. And then next thing you know, I'm just seeing stuff all over the place, <laughs> all over again. People come in and it's um, live streams. I'm seeing comments on social media again. And I'm like, I guess I just wasn't paying no attention. It's still happening. It is still happening. The grift still continues. And he's talking about opening additional businesses to have additional grifts. So anyway, for the second time, let me move on. Jesus. Okay, maybe we'll be here two and a half hours. What time is it? <sighs> okay, so the other thing that we just should have on our radar, I don't have a clip in here just because of the sake of time, I didn't have time to pull it. But um, this new grift is potentially, is uh, he's been talking a lot about the watermelon challenge. And he, um, he's been eating watermelon uh, at night in the bed with a whole trough of it in front of him. I have that. We'll 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 look at it. Don't don't rush me. It's coming. It's coming. Um, and he's he's been referring to a guy on Facebook who's also who's been doing the challenge. And I, I saw some stuff here or there on social media. I kind of ignored it. I was like, this guy's just doing stuff to go to trend. I don't know if he is or isn't, but that's how I looked at it. And I kept it moving. Well, Darius has now gotten hip to it. And now he's potentially debating about doing uh eating only watermelon that's not healthy but go ahead let half um so we just need to i just want this to be on our radar ain't no telling what it because the next thing you know he might have a watermelon group on facebook of high uh high people and they anything to grow <laughs> anything for engagement so that's all we got on that right now um, and when you hear these sort of things, like sometimes when I hear these things, it makes me um, 
start to my ears peak up like, oh, what is he up to now? <laughs> Where's this about to go? <laughs> That's one of those. The, the watermelon thing is like, mm, what you about to do with this? Uh, so here's our next post. We're moving into our next topic. This was this is going to close us out for the night. Uh, it's a little, little longer, but it's going to close us out for the night. I want to know... Now this is I'm gonna be I'm gonna be really transparent. I'm getting very comfortable tonight. Maybe because I'm tired. <laughs> this is a subject that I just have not cared to talk about because it's not important to me, um, and I also don't want people to focus on it. Uh, although it is Darius Crook's goal for people to focus on it, so they are distracted from all of the. Many receipts. <laughs> Mine are all digital, but I'm just giving an example. Dram dramatics of it all. All the many receipts that I have of his scam and et cetera from, you know, way back when all, all the way to present day. So that my poll question is. Did you know. That Darius and I. Dated 20 years ago. That we dated for almost I think it was two years. I don't know. But like in the early 2000s. He was 19 when we met. I think he he even said, I guess he was 21 when we uh, when I broke up with him. That's the crazy part, because he he likes to paint me. Uh, Shut up. Um, hey, you there talking about this. This y'all anniversary. Shut up. <laughs> Go to the corner. <laughs> Give me your phone. Matter of fact, put on put. Hey, you there on a the timeout. <laughs> Moderators. <laughs> um, so. He tries to, he wants to put that narrative out there because when you put a narrative out there such as that, although again, over 20 years ago at this point, because it was like 2000. So over 20 years ago, um, I broke up with him. It wasn't like some major relationship. Like it doesn't even hold a candle to the relationships I've been in and, and, and are in and all of that. Don't even hold a candle to it. He was 19, y'all. <laughs> now I was um, what was I, 20? Am I six years older? I think I'm six years older. Yeah, I'm six years older than him. So if he was 19, I was 25. So you can imagine that wasn't, you know. Anyway, one of the reasons I didn't come out back in the day, when I, I didn't have a YouTube platform, I wasn't a public figure or anything like that. One of the reasons I didn't come out was because I was closeted. Uh people only only very close people to me knew him. Like my family didn't know, et cetera, et cetera. So I knew when he scammed us, I was still closeted to just a select few people only knew about me. Um, I knew that if I said something, just like he does now to people, I knew he was going to try to out me. And I was not here for that. <laughs> and again, I didn't have a platform anyway. It just would have been me blasting him on social media. He was a lot smaller. His platform was smaller. So... I mean, word would have got out, but it, it wouldn't have been impactful enough to shut it down. I'm, I know that. But come to find out, you know, fast forward, because uh, narcissist doesn't change his strikes. Um, fast forward. What was it? So we dated for two years. We broke up. I broke up with him. Um, we didn't talk for about a close to a year. He moved away to Jersey or something. He came back. We ended up being friends. Um, we reconnected. Ended up being friends, and we were friends from that point, platonic, nothing ever happened, from that point all the way through to he sc scammed us with the food truck. So that was almost 10 years of friendship, brotherhood it became. And so, but I knew that he would try to use, you know, oh, he gay kind of thing. Um, so fast forward to when I finally did come out and say something about this whole thing, 11 years later or whatever, 10 years later, in 2021, he did the he, first thing he did was say, I heard my ex Lavelle is trying to join the people who hate me. <laughs> and then uh, so basically he was he was the first thing he tried to do was out me. He didn't say my friend. He said my ex. Now, mind you, two years of dating and then nine years of friendship. After that, and then another close to 10 years of not talking at all. Um, and then you want to go say, that's my ex. <laughs> so he does that. And he, he still uses that narrative today to make people discredit what I have to say, because many of us have had situations with exes uh, or dated people 
who were off or who hated on us or who have a vendetta against us because we broke up with them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is easy to identify with. And therefore he will keep putting that title on me to make people easily like, oh, that's your ex. Oh, please. We know how exes are versus saying, wait, but he was your friend for nine years after that. So were y'all really like that wasn't even a part of y'all real relationship. So I got more because he honestly, he tells on himself, just like with everything else, that he thinks of it the same way that I do. Again, we were friends for nine years after that. Neither one of us even thought about, harped on, considered the, the, the past relationship. It was all about the brotherhood moving forward and our group of friends. It was just a whole, it was, it was friendship. Um, and he will tell on himself, and I have some clips. Well, he would tell on himself and you'll get to see like, oh, he just making, he just making it sound like jealous ex because it helps make people ignore Vail as much as possible. Even though 80% of you know, and you're still watching, <laughs> looking at this poll, 80% of you already knew. I thought it would be, I don't know, a little less than 80%, but already knew 20%. There you go. There's way more. And I am going to do. Uh, I am going to do the retrospective. You guys voted in the beginning of this that you do want to see the retrospective, which I was doing anyway. <laughs> but I am going to do the retrospective where I go all the way literally to the day we met. I'm going to recap all of that and then move all the way through the timeline to, to us getting to this point. Um, but anyway, so one of the things that happened back in 2022, this was like July of 2022. Um, yeah, I started talking in 2021. Crooks would pretty much just drag me on his IG lies and then he would somewhat ignore me for the most part. But then at a certain point, he decided to start trolling me uh, on his through his burner accounts on tick on um, Twitter. I realized I didn't pull this in because I wasn't going to go as in depth. So I'm going to just gloss over this. Wait, or is it right here from the other day? Oh, it is here from the other day. There we go. I left it in. So one of his posts, so he, he had this um, burner account that he was using called Tom Fox Con. We're going to do a deep dive and I'm going to show you all that as well. But Tom Fox Con and this burner account would only primarily attack me and only would pop up when I got on. It was, it was the craziest thing. And so it ended up um, he because we know who it was. Ended up saying, uh, Vail, you sound butthurt uh, because Darius was blowing out your back um, and he won't do it no more. Something, something crazy like that. And so at that point, you know, I had had it. And so this gets a little messy for some of y'all. Y'all get to see the Vail Nito. Vail Nito came out on Twitter. <laughs> Vail Nito acts up over there a little bit. So... I did respond and I said from that blowing back out comment um, and it was some other stuff leading up to it. It was like a harassment over, over the morning. And then finally, I was like, I can't stop laughing at this one. Hashtag Darius Crooks. Uh, I saved this post for your federal trial when you tried to plead insanity, because when I show the pic of what you looked like before your mommy makeover, they'll surely um, know that you were insane for this tweet. So then this is actually, I'm looking at, um, I don't have each one that I was going to put. Let me pull it in. Let me pull it in. Cause it's out of, uh Oh, that's not what I was doing. Hold on. Uh Oh, and I got to delete in order to do it. Hold on. Y'all. I got too many assets in here. Uh, hey, you're the same. Please don't show us. Y'all see those empty tables there uh, at the diner where Darius owed my computer. Hold on. Hold on. Hold your horses. Oh, I've been doing so much today. Let me see if it's even where I think it is. You know what? This I should have stuck to my original plan. I'm gonna do a deep dive on that part of it. 
I moved it and I'm gonna be able to find it quick. Let me see. Yeah, I moved it, I'm gonna be able to find it quick. So I'll just explain. So basically, what happened was he was um coming for me, and that's where I told y'all about the whole three inches of sadness, where that came from. So eventually, uh that was one of my clapbacks was the three inches of uh, sadness. And we then lead to about a week later, out of the blue, I hear about uh, people are messaging me. I'm leaving a barbershop. I'm getting text messages. I'm getting DMs. My phone is kind of blowing up. And I'm getting messages that Darius Crooks is doing a PSA saying that I cyber bullied um, Jerome. And because I cyber bullied Jerome, they are breaking up so that he can protect Jerome. So I ended up, because I was getting such a response, doing a uh, response video to it and ah, he got, oh, he's got his monkeys watching you online. You know what? That's great. So let's, let's switch gears. Cause in, instead of this, I would rather talk about the consent judgment. Are they still on? <laughs> Let me pull it up on my phone. Let's talk about the, or should we talk about the fresh to go scam that he was a part of? that he claimed he had nothing to do with, um, where he owned a fresh to go, well, fresh go, I should say, uh, business in Chicago that scammed over 250 um, customers by using their credit cards illegally. And they all ended up coming down on him. And his other businesses were floundering because he was, uh, being fraudulent with those as well. And he ended up walking away from the cupcake gallery, literally leaving it uh, with everything there, curtains hanging up and everything, and ran off. Because remember when you had that roommate um, over there on Kofax and you left in the middle of the day while everyone was at work, your roommate comes home, there's uh, your stuff is gone, except for like everything you could take and pack in your car was gone, with the exception of the, with the exception of the, um, with the exception of big furniture. So you left your TV, you left your bed, et cetera, but everything else you packed. And then remember you went on that, um, when you did that, sh the humanities festival video on, at the Peaches restaurant out South on Bronzeville. And in that, you told a lie that you were basically doing some soul searching. You had hit a rough patch in life and you ended up driving to um, you were driving to Philly to get Philly cheesesteaks from Chicago. You decided to take a random road trip uh, and you were just going to like just get away for a little while, get some Philly cheesesteaks. What you failed to mention was that you packed all your ish, <laughs> like all your stuff. Um and then you claim that on your way, you made a, a wrong turn on the turnpike and you end up going towards New York instead. Now, this is all, you know, documented. I wish you had a toll because we could do a watch party. I can literally put this in a more concise summary so that we can go through each one of your scams to let people know we ain't making up this ish. And again, the consent judgment, I literally was just showing the audience. I don't know if you just got on here or not. Um, but we were just literally going over your consent. I wish you had have told me because we could have prepared properly for. Um, I mean, we got plenty of stuff already out there, but we could have prepared for all of this. I feel I feel. feel like we. Um, let me say, I'm just going to your file because I got a whole bunch of this stuff like and this ain't stuff that I just, you know, pulled up. This stuff is all over the Internet. Um, I'm just recalling what's already there. I think I'd rather do the consent judgment because this is a lie that you've been telling for a long time too, that uh, it was that you didn't know and that all they required was for you to pay the um, 
$145,000 in restitution uh, for your mistake. But what ended up uh, being the truth is that they also snatched all of your business licenses in the state of Georgia. And that is why you are you have moved to Houston or are trying to uh, plant your roots in Houston because the warehouse don't count because you didn't need a business license for that. But you do need one if you were to open up a restaurant, et cetera. So it's funny how you're not mentioning Georgia uh, as one of your locations for one of these future businesses because the consent judgment, uh, which says permanent injunction, states that you can never open a business in the state of Georgia. And they were actually was having you report where you moved. You had to give them your address like they were watching you, watching you. I know that. Um, we even have the representative's name. But I don't know. I don't know how you I mean, could you comment? Do you have your burner going? Can you comment? What Which business should I discuss? Because the other day we went through all of them. Isn't that right? Um, Vipo? We we I just went down a whole list of the businesses. And I mean, we can do that again. I can. Should I do? And I'm sorry for those of you who just tuned in for me to talk about the X, but that that ain't no crime. That's just showing his narcissistic behavior and predatory practices. That ain't showing his the the call, the harm that he's causing all of humanity. Uh, should I go over the businesses? Or should I say Ponzi schemes again? Again, I mean, let us know. Let us know. Y'all give me. Y'all tell me which direction to take with this, because I man, I feel I feel so honored. And had I known, I would have prepared a different. A different topic. I don't know. Is he still talking? Because he's he's in there yakking and landing the bed with his taco meat. <laughs> y'all saying go for it. Y'all say, see, I didn't want to waste y'all time. Like, because I know a lot. But y'all, 78%, this is the 80%. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's... Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> All right. Well, let's put up a picture that reminds us of the beginning days of Darius Crooks, uh, a.k.a. Darius Cooks. Um, man, y'all know I'm a perfectionist, so I don't I don't really like doing things on the fly that that grieves my perfectionist soul. But you, when you got to regroup, you got to regroup because there may be, you know, a handful of dehivers that caught a couple things like what wait that ain't what he been telling us and so let's go on back over here so remember let me know if you remember interact with me in the chat and um he's not watching anymore marianne <laughs> ah crooks where are you come on this is gonna be fun Donner. thank you marianne darn it I was about to have so much fun. Why he stopped watching, y'all? Hold on, I'm gonna put on a commercial because I, I need to do something. And then, then we're gonna run through the businesses, and then I'm gonna let y'all go. One more, one more go around on the businesses. I actually interviewed Darius uh, Cooks on my radio show. Um, I've been five or six years ago before the he blew up on social media. And um, just this was just articulated. He actually went on Periscope Live during the radio show and did his own show in the studio during the <laughs> show that he was supposed to be on. But he's a narcissistic individual. And because of that, he's had many of these run-ins. I think there was a scandal a few years ago where he was doing fake credit repair for people and got sued. Um, his restaurant got closed down, those sorts of things. And so so he, ma he maintains these online scams, uh, preying on the uh, hearts and minds of his uh, his followers. And even just it was just, uh, just articulated after our show, because we, we tend to ridicule people when they uh, act upon our show. He actually went on Periscope Live to talk about me and our producer and some of the other guests after the show. So this has been going on for a long period of time. Now, legally, when somebody talks about you online, 
that's just talk. But once they get into the place of making threats, either violence, threatening to uh, release personal information, well, that's where you can actually file a criminal report against this individual. And, be, and if they do release uh, improper or censored information, personal information that is privileged, um, that absolutely you can report that to the Georgia Bureau of Investigations or to the Federal Bureau of Investigations for them to look into it, particularly if you have multiple individuals who are involved in this. <laughs>
he had that back then. And it just kind of, I, for one, I was coming out of a relationship with an older person who was six years or seven years older than me. And he put me through the flux. And then, so part of it was like me to then meet a younger person. I was like, well, maybe that's the problem. Maybe old people, they just got too much baggage or older people got too much baggage, et cetera, et cetera. Let me try this young. And then he was appeared, appeared to be so mature, had his own vehicle, had his own apartment, had a worked at ADP. So in my mind, had a decent job. Listen to even back then, y'all, he was listening to R&B and he didn't listen to rap. R&B and gospel. That was the only thing he listened to and primarily gospel. So conversation was very mature beyond his years. It was. And so I, I kind of I fell into it. I got I got. That's what narcissists do. So this this piece here, because I'm going to forget it just because now we switch gears. So I'm going I'm to read this real quick because this is partially what got me. Also, what got Jerome and probably everybody else. How to identify a narcissistic partner. Some of y'all need to see this because y'all probably in these situations now. They were charming and had a big personality and made you feel great in the beginning. I'll, I'll, when I do the deep dive, I'll go over this um, from the perspective of the things that happened with Crooks and I back then. They have control in the relationship and are easily jealous or hurt by you. I didn't get the jealousy, but I got the hurt by you part. Uh, they hardly have any empathy for your feelings or actions if they don't benefit. That is why I broke up with him. <laughs> that is why I broke up with him. But I'll, I'll give that. If you want to know right away and you're like, Vail, come on. Like you be always holding stuff back. I talked about it. I'm talking about it even in more in depth when we talk about it again, the retrospective. But if you go back to my Surviving Darius Crooks playlist, the first episode when I started to talk about it, it's two episodes that is a part one and a part two. Where I talk about literally the day we met, blah, 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 all the way through the relationship to the end of it. It's a two, two parter. You already get this part of your answer. Uh, they are dramatic, overacting, no, overreacting and attention seeking if they get hurt. We see this now. <laughs> Y'all see this. I didn't experience as much of that. He wasn't quite as dramatic as he, he definitely wasn't as mean spirited towards me. I didn't see it towards me and I didn't see it necessarily towards the people around us, but I do believe it existed. I just think I never was on the receiving end and that's why I was blind to it. Just like the D-Hags. That's why I understand them so much. Um... I actually have a lot of, I see uh, Jackie saying you need more, <laughs> you need more mods. I probably do. We probably do need to add a couple backstage mod, uh, mod subs, but um, we actually have quite a few mods on the front end. Um, the other thing is that they only value you when you fulfill their needs. They lash out if you don't. We literally, we see this playing out today again in him being a social media influence and how he influencer and how he engages with his audience how he engages with his employees or people, you know, the actors or players in his world. Jerome was a victim. Um, what was his name? What was the old sous chef guy that he worked with before he hired uh, Q and Ramon? What was that guy's name? I'm forgetting his name now. But anyway, he was a major player and he had, uh, Darius had the, the D high following this guy and loving him and oh, and every everybody's Marcel. Where's Marcel and this and that and Marcel this and Marcel that. When Marcel was no longer filling Darius's needs, Bruce too. <laughs> See, Santa saying Bruce. Bruce wasn't even <laughs> who I was talking to, but Bruce was the first Marcel. Bruce was Marcel back in 2020, 2015, 2016, I think was those years. I literally some stuff I'm working on has Bruce in the storyline. So Bruce is coming up. I'm telling you, I'm doing y'all the whole rundown. Then they claim to know better than you and often make you feel incompetent. We see him do that to his followers all the time. I just literally just gave y'all the example of he telling people who's that they food in their state is garbage because he don't like it. He knows better than them. Well, then all of us, what food is the best in the country? Whatever he says, is it goes. 
So anyway, there was some of that in our situation, even with him being younger and all of that, there was some of that as well. He wasn't controlling of me, but he had some of those ways. I pretty much ignored that stuff or just like, or just didn't care and let him have his little way either way. Um, so we have the pay, deluxe payroll. He, he worked, he worked for sure payroll. He then decided he was going to start his own payroll company. Me, I'm just on the outskirts, like whatever's whatever you do, whatever you want to do. I'm in his room. He's on a computer. He's creating a website. He's always done all this stuff himself. He created a website, created his logo. And I did ask him about the conflict of interest, so to speak, with him working um, for a payroll company and creating his own payroll company. He basically was like, he got a handle, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so I was like, cool, whatever. Fast forward. I couldn't tell you how long. It wasn't long. <laughs> it definitely probably wasn't more than a month, if that, or a few weeks. Next thing I know, he's saying he has to take all his, like, he's shutting down the website. He's trying to delete it from the web because he's gotten word that his employer is now asking him about this side business. Come to find out, one of the clients, he was trying to poach clients from them. And one of the clients reported him. And... Next thing I know, he's going into work like he's supposed to have his meeting. I'm, I'm hoping and praying for the best for him. And he tells me he got fired. They, by the time he got there, all this stuff he tried to remove the day before, just like now. This is just like what we go through now. He does stuff. We catch it. He try to clean it up or, you know, now he's try, he creates his narrative. He's learned that. That's a new trick. He didn't have that trick back then. He's learned to create his narrative. So he just make up a story, take a piece of the truth. And create a whole narrative around it. And then most people buy it. He was not an influencer and stuff back then. So he was like, you know, nobody. Nobody really cared. But today, his word carries a little weight. So he um, goes to work. They fire him. He's fired. Next thing you know, within less than a month, he is evicted. So that tells me that he was already not, um, you know, not paying rent. <laughs> and... Um, so he ended up, I, I'm pretty sure he asked me to move in with me. Yes, he did. He definitely asked me if he could move in with me because his only option was he couldn't go back home to his mama. We'll get back into all that stuff too, but we get into that. Um, he had an option to move in with his friend, Eric, who he's still friends with today. I told you, Eric is like his mama, his gay mama. He didn't want to move in with Eric because Eric had boys in and out of the house all time of night. Eric had an environment he just didn't like. He didn't feel comfortable there like that. Now, he had stayed at Eric's before as a teenager, I think, when he was running away and all kind of other crazy stuff. Um, but he didn't want to have to live with Eric at that age as he was getting older. He wasn't that much older, but y'all know what I'm saying. So um, Spider-Man said he never once stated he was fired or evicted. Darius has been fired from. I don't know. Y'all, it's been so long. I literally have to. Um, but I'm going to see. So there was ADP he was fired from. Uh, sure payroll fired from there was something in between that I can't quite remember, but I know he ended up working for CPS in their payroll. Oh, and I said this in another, the other video, I kept saying CPS. And then as I watched it back, I'm like, everybody don't know what the hell CPS is. CPS is the Chicago public school district. So he worked for the Chicago public school district in the payroll department. Um, and then I feel like it was maybe another company after that, or that was the company that he got it was some it was some jobs in between y'all it's been so long but anyway he's been fired from a handful of jobs while i knew him he was evicted from every apartment i knew him to have um so there was the apartment when i first met him on huron he was evicted from there i think after huron was he after huron he moved in with me for a bit then he found the apartment on central he only lived with me for two to three weeks uh again i was Again, this is how impressed I was. And at that time, we were still dating. And that's why I was so impressed with him at such a young age, because I'm like, wow, this dude is really a hustler. He is a hard worker. He's not a, um, a loaf. He was unemployed. And no, maybe he had found a job. I think he had found a job, but he was. Yes, that's what it was. He had found a job and he was evicted. But he, he had all that fixed within a month is what I'm trying to tell y'all. 
because when he asked me if he could move in, I was like, damn, I ain't trying to have no live in boyfriend kind of situation. And I'm like, this nigga going to end up stuck here for some time for some <laughs> next thing. You know, I'm stuck with somebody I got to try to get rid of. And he so I told him, yes, while he said, I think he said a few weeks to a month or whatever he said. And ours is uh, emerge. Ours is called D DCFS, uh, Department of Children and Family Services. So, yeah. But CPS is Chicago, Chicago Public School System. Um, so, again, I told him yes while in my mind, because anytime I tell a person yes for something, I usually always look at it as what's the worst case scenario and if I can accept the worst case scenario. So even though I told him yes, I was like, he's going to be here like six to eight months. And so I'm saying okay to that in my mind. But he had only asked for a few weeks. Like I said, two to three, I was shocked when he came home from work one day and, and he was catching a bus from here because he didn't have a um, he didn't have a car. Uh, he had lost. That was the other thing. The Dodge Neon that he had when I first met him had got repossessed. And so he didn't have a car either anymore. So he was on public transit. I mean, life had just fallen apart. He's He's been through a lot. Um, so he ended up staying with me. I bet he got off so he could watch this. Hey, Darius, I know you're back. <laughs> you ain't want them to hear this. <laughs> I get it. You got you got to protect that scampire. I get it. I get it. Um, anyway, so so what surprised me about you, and I don't know, I've never told you this, but what surprised me was the fact that, and impressed me, and impressed me, was the fact that you kept your word, and you were, I think you were gone a little quicker than you said. You might have said, give me a month, and you might have been gone in like that two and a half, three weeks. He also broke my brand new bed during that time. My bed was about a year old. He called himself playing. He was easily 300 pounds, and he like jumped on my bed. And in the video, I talk about that in the series. You remember that, Darius, when you jumped on my bed, you cracked the frame? Like the, the whole decorative wood frame, the thing that held it. So it was like gone, gone. Luckily, I have no construction. So I, I rigged it. <laughs> you never paid me for that. It'd be nice if you paid me for that now. But anyway, so he ended up getting he ended up getting this new place. And that was on Central, if I'm not mistaken. But what I later realized, and I never even thought about it until recent time, like the, the past two years or so after hearing all of this stuff, I said, wow, he must have still been scamming, maybe running that payroll company, the deluxe payroll that I thought he just stopped doing altogether. He probably was running behind the scenes the entire time. I'm not sure, you know, working in payroll, you got access to credit card, not credit card, social security numbers, all kind of personal information. I don't know. I can say alleged. I don't know. But that was something that I was like, now that would make sense because he had to have enough for first month's rent and security. That was the very least they were asking for back then. First month's rent and security. And he was able to move in these places. And generally he was, you know, buying his necessities. The only other thing I noticed is when he would move from places or get evicted, he would just leave stuff. He's 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 not really attached to things in that way or people really in that way when he's done. And he's mentioned it himself. He's like, I'm a Capricorn. When I'm done, I'm done. Literally, <laughs> literally with his business, with his, with his furniture, <laughs> with his men, with his friends, with business part. It don't matter when he, when that switch hits, he just done. It's that detachment. It's that from not getting that love as a child. He didn't have attachment. That's what usually what people get attachment is through, through love. There is no uh, M. Nicole. There is no degree from a Christian college. Moody Bible Institute stated that Darius Crooks never attended a school, never graduated. I think they say he never even attended, but I know they said for a fact he never graduated, even though he lied and said he did. I don't know why you told that lie. That didn't even make no sense. You ain't even do that. Anyway, so he lived on Central, got evicted from Central. So Huron evicted, Central evicted. I think after that was... Warren, I don't know for sure, but I know he had issues with the landlord because it was a private landlord. It was a white guy who owned, used to live in it. It was a two flat. He lived in one unit and he rented out the other. And then he eventually, him and his wife got a different place and he was renting out both units. Darius moved on the first floor. They were cool at first because Darius is, again, charismatic. But towards the end, he was saying stuff that had me, I think he was saying the landlord was tripping and stuff like that. Probably tripping because he was stopping checks and stuff. So he was evicted from, now I'm, there was issues. I don't know for a fact he was evicted, but all of a sudden it was like mysteriously he's not there anymore and he has a new place. So then he was on Kingston. Kingston, 
uh, he was evicted from, I do know. Um, and then the last place um, was where he rented from our friends, but he just dipped out and he claimed, this is, this is the crazy part too, and and uh, uh, your old roommate still got issues with you for this, because that's how you did him dirty. Uh, Darius claimed and told the landlord that he had left his rent money in the bedroom, uh, in his bedroom. And when the landlord went down to the apartment to go where Darius claimed he left his, his half of the rent money, it wasn't there to be found. So it, it, it was set up to look like, well, did the roommate get it kind of thing? Do you think Darius actually uh, left the rent money. So when I'm saying this, I know I'm all over the place a little bit. But I'm giving you, I'm in the weeds with these stories tonight. It's a little different than the first time. We ain't getting through all these businesses. I absolutely am not getting through all these businesses. I'll decide. We ain't going over three hours for sure, but I'll decide where I'm going to stop. Um, but do you think that Darius actually left the rent money? So when I'm, what I'm talking about is we're, we've now fast forward because we're only talking about his places of residence in Chicago. He gets to um, this is this is now he has the cupcake gallery um, place and now all the businesses have fallen apart. He's doing the Freshco scam, um, the local holla. He scammed me and the other business partner out of the food truck business and lived in the guy's building. <laughs> scammed a friend and was living in his building. <laughs> Just dirty. <laughs> Just dirty. Um. So he had done all of that. And so he was escaping from Chicago, heading to New York. He claimed, again, in that story, that he was heading to Philly on like a little hiatus, a little trip to go get Philly cheesesteaks, but then made a wrong turn on the turnpike, ended up in New York, decided to stay, and ended up getting a job at the um, real estate, something Wakefield, something in Wakefield, real um corporation as a HR director within four days, he said. What company is hiring HR directors in four days? National, well, no, international, he claims, companies are hiring. And I have this on tape. This ain't me making this up. What company? I've had jobs that assistant management jobs that took a month to get in. <laughs> You telling me at a director level, it took me years with my last corporate gig, years to get to the level of, of that status. And we weren't hiring people. I mean, I hired and interviewed and all. Even my 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 staff, I wasn't able to get them in in four days. I wasn't trying to get them in in four days. Part of it, you want to put them through the motions to see if they're serious. <sighs> so anyway, that's his story that he was heading to go get Philly cheesesteaks in Philly, after he had left his rent money and had packed up his car. Now, he only on a hiatus, but he literally packed up his all, his entire possessions, never returned to Chicago for at least a year or some months that I know of. Like, he was gone for a long time. He actually went dark off the internet as well. He wasn't posting for a couple of weeks. It wasn't too long, because you know he needed attention, so he didn't stay, he didn't stay gone too long. But he, he went dark and then all of a sudden he popped up um, and then we were blocked. You know, he blocked me and anybody that he scammed or was closely associated. Now, that's not true because he he kept some people who very close to me. Um, he didn't block them. I don't know. <laughs> I guess he thought they weren't going. I don't know. Be telling me stuff and all that. I don't know. I don't know. Ain't no tell. So. Um, this poll, do you think Darius actually left the rent money? I should have said. 88% of you understood and said, hell no. <laughs> you know he ain't left it. Quit playing with our, quit playing our face, Bill. You know he ain't leave that money. I do know that y'all didn't leave, that he didn't leave that money. <laughs> Based on what I know now, back then I didn't know what the hell was going on. It was craziness. It was so crazy because we had never had drama like that. And to have someone so close to you, and then when they leave, you hear all this stuff and you're like, what the hell was he doing? So anyway, payroll company, Pretty much, that's a little summary. Then you got Everyday Cooking. We know that's the YouTube channel that also became the brand that he used um, to have the investors 
invest under for the cupcake gallery, like all those businesses technically were housed under the uh, everyday cooking. Um, then we got Facebook. That's a business for him. But we know that Facebook is um, Facebook is a platform that he uses to, to grow his base. That's how he grew his base. Um, and he still uses it to this day for that purpose. Uh, his image on Facebook is a little bit different. He's the most gritty on Instagram. He's the most messy. Well, no, he's messy everywhere, but in a different kind of way, like the IG lives, the Instagram lives. I should be more specific. Used to be Periscope. He used Periscope for that. And when Periscope went away, he moved over to the IG lives. So you can see now how he tuning in because they telling him, oh, Vail over there, you know, doing his expose that you asked for again. Yes, you asked. Asked and you shall receive. Here you go. Hello. And I apologize for taking so long because I only did like an episode or two when you first asked. And then I was like, oh, I owe him this. He, he asked. Uh, he beckoned me. He called me. And so um, here you go. And they're not stopping anytime soon. So then you have. Um, so we talked about Instagram, whatever. Then you got the cupcake gallery scam. So I'm going to dig into, I am digging into it, but I'm trying to think of how far away it is. I don't want to, see, that'll be coming. That's like almost one of the first few businesses as we going in. But anyway, y'all know the Cupcake Gallery had the 60 plus investors who were scammed. Um, they were supposed to have 1% interest ownership, rather, I should say, of the business. 1% for every $2,000 that they um, invested. Um, many of them never saw a dime. Some saw some money, many saw nothing. <laughs> um, so long story short, he, when he escaped from Chicago, those people were looking for him. There was a band of them who were looking for, him. I think it was 20 to 30 of them who contacted myself and the other friend because they knew again, this is how close I was to him. They were trying to catch, get in touch with anybody who they knew had association or was close enough. And they like, where is he, et cetera, et cetera. And we like, hey, we don't even know because he scammed us too. And the funny part is me and the other friend were leaving a consultation with an attorney. Uh, we were having lunch with the attorney talking about us suing from the, the food truck scam. Um, so I'll go in, into depth with that. I heard him mention, uh, that's what he got to talking about when I stepped away for a minute. So he had brought up the lunch machine again. He loves telling his version of the story. Ain't yet showed that Nan receipt. Not Nan email, not Nan nothing. It's his narrative. Y'all know that ain't how I roll. That's why it's taking me a little while to get to it because I, I like to present it where it's concise, factual, with the receipts that line up, timeline, et cetera, et cetera. I ain't finna just talk off the top of my head telling what I thought I remembered about the business deal that caused, you know, the, the ultimate fallout of us. Hello to uh, the flying monkeys and crooks. <laughs> Take a seat. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I hope I'm not missing questions. If, if there are questions, I'd leave them up a minute until I notice them. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, then we had the cupcake gallery, cupcake mix. Y'all know we talked about, oh, I read, I read a, um, a message from one of the former people he tried to get to invest in that. Uh, I read that on the other day. So any of you who are new to this, um, if there are any dehivers, you're lost, you don't know what's really happening. You're like, why, why are they trying to expose my favorite culinary, um, you know, chef? And I don't get it. He's so kind. He's so lovely. Uh, he make me laugh. He he been good to me. All that. Uh, if you are curious in a legitimate way, there's plenty of content. And we've actually been doing it for the past. What is this week? Are we going into week? Are we going into week three already? Is this week three? But we've been covering it for. Yeah, I think it's going into week three. Uh, pretty much nightly. So you can go and look at the most recent videos on it. But there's also playlists on this that date back to two years ago. So, and it'll debunk a lot, unfortunately. I know it's hard for some of y'all to um, to believe that someone could, could seem so personable, like a Christian. They make you laugh. They are talented. They are charismatic. And then they be a scammer. Well, that's what scammers are. <laughs> They're all of those things. That's how they scam. That's part of the grift is to attract you. <laughs> People don't understand that part. People think that scammers are supposed to be gross and repulsive. And, and 
I don't know, can't articulate and uh, you, you, you know, you're automatically going to get a horrible vibe with them. That's not how that works. If it worked that way, then scammers would not be successful. Predators would not be as successful as they are. They would not rule our world. Um, we're not ordering nothing, <laughs> nothing from a scammer. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I'm just saying, like, for those who are following, and I get it. I Sometimes when I'm doing my research, you know, I have to watch or whatever. And I will chuckle here or there and even learn something here or there, um, especially with his ways that he scams social media, you know, and manipulates it. I, I've learned a few things here or there. And so I get that part. And if you want to continue to do that, you know, more power to you. I just suggest that you don't invest in it because um, your day will come. Like the comment we just read that somebody did to dining with Darius and never got the address. Another person, not just one. OK, so we know about the cupcake gallery, cupcake mix. Talked in depth about that. I don't want to drown that. Uh, local Holla. I don't really know if that became a scam or I know he talked about he had two people that were interested. It was supposed to be like a black version of um, the black version of Groupon because he, you know, he'll take other concepts. He always tries to act like he's um, the blueprint, <laughs> as he says, the blueprint. But the truth is, he's just copying other people's concepts. I got a message or saw it uh, somewhere where someone was saying that he stole the greens and gravy name from a, a former friend, too. So the name of his restaurant, Greens and Gravy, I've heard the, the his saying, um, food is my life. Life is my food. There's a lady on Twitter who was like, and he stole that from me. And, you know, um, again, lesser known people, he steals these things from. And then because he's larger, he puts it out there and people think he's the first one to do it. It's a whole list of stuff. The soul food cake, that cake with the um, it's a two or three layer cornbread cake. And he puts um, mashed potatoes as the, the frosting and then chicken on top, chicken fingers or whatever uh, on top, stolen. But his went viral because he was larger or known in, in our industry, um, in our demographics more than that other person. I have the footage. I actually, I did a video on it before. We're going we're gonna to cover it again. Um, not his original idea. And he went viral for it. People thinking, oh, the guy who made that sofa cake. Yeah, the guy who stole somebody's sofa cake. Yes, Jackie, send the treats. We, send the treats I was working on this weekend, uh, full transparency. I was working on it. Oh, it's coming together so great. Oh, it's coming together. There are so many. Ooh, just the way I even do the content, the way I organize it now is just different than it was back when I originally did it. Ooh, it's going to be good, y'all. It's going to be good. And I got, I got additional uh, receipts that I didn't have when I first did the story. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Make sure you're subscribing. Then we have the lunch machine. That's the business that I did with them, with Darius Rather. Well, it was them. It was me, Darius, and uh, a friend slash business partner. Um, I'm going to cover that in depth, and I've talked about it a bunch. I don't feel like talking about it tonight. I'm done. <laughs> I feel like I'm done, period. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, we got Fresh Go. Then we got the OVO records. Somebody was correcting me in the comments saying, Vail, it's uh, they just put the OVO. But I'm like, am I saying each letter independently? Because they didn't put a period in between, not uh, OVU. So I was like, they were correcting me, but they didn't really make it clear. <laughs> so I was like, obviously, I'm pronouncing it wrong, but they still didn't help me figure out how I should be. Uh, so if it's OVO, it should be O period V period O period. But that's what I'm guessing it is. So OVO record label, uh, it was Drake's record label, is, I guess. Maybe he still got it. It has started, I forgot what year that was. I got it here. I just don't want to, if I get to clicking on it, it's going to open new windows and block stuff. What year is this? It's, it's 2014. So keep in mind, I'm put, I'm a, I, I need to. It's something else I'm working on, too, with a timeline. But anyway, in 2014, so this is these were the New York years. Um, Drake had started his OVO Sound Inc. And there was someone named Darius Williams who was emailing artists and pretending to work for the company and saying if they paid twenty five hundred dollars, basically they would um, be able to get them a deal with OVO. 
And it was confirmed that it was uh, Darius Crooks. I, I ended up doing like a poll because I'm like, I don't have a solid receipt. I don't see, I see the claim. I see his name. This is legitimate. This was messages that were going out back in 2014 of them warning people about Darius Williams. I just don't know it's the same Darius Williams for for a fact. Um, don't sound far fetched <laughs> based on what I've learned, but I don't know for a fact. So, I, again, I will only say what I know for a fact when I know it to be a fact. But it looks it looks factual. <laughs> Darius, did you do this, too? Just DM me and let me know if you really did. I'll still act like I don't know <laughs> for sure. <laughs> anyway, or troll me when one of your uh, burner accounts and tell me. Anyway, uh, then there was the Black Food Network. Another one. And I forgot this because somebody, when that person mentioned that he stole the greens and gravy name for his restaurant from a friend of his, um, it then occurred, how the hell did I forget that there was a whole thing going on about the Black Food Network? And now I got to dig for it. Yeah, because I don't have it here yet. There was a whole controversy with the Black Food Network because there was someone else who had already established the Black Food Network and he stole the idea from them, but he beat them to the punch with getting, basically getting the the, the eyes on it, et cetera. And I don't know if he also, I don't know if he trademarked it or what. I can't remember uh, the details on that. I got to dig because I, I know I saw it, but that was like a huge controversy and a lot of uh, social media uh, banter about people calling him out for that too. So he stole that concept. I totally forgot about that. Then we have the cookbooks. We know that uh, his plan is to have 25 cookbooks before the time that he retires his grift of um, the cookbook scam. The cookbook, the, most of the controversy with the cookbook situation is his, um, his not shipping the books, people not getting them. Also him saying that Also him saying, I'm sorry, I'm reading a comment. I was trying to understand if it was something I need to respond to. All him, also him saying that, uh, it, like telling people, oh, you ordered the ebook, not the hard copy, et cetera. And people are like, no, I know what I ordered kind of thing. Um, so them not getting them. And then also the books themselves being plagiarized. Now, the one he just put out, I think the most recent one, late, late last year, if I'm not mistaken, people ended up looking through and Googling and figured out that he literally plagiarized recipes from the Food Network, Pinterest, all kinds of places that they literally were able to line up. And it's all on Twitter already. They were lining up the recipes that he literally stole from other sources that are in his recipe book verbatim, verbatim. Um, so that's part of it, too. And then, you know, there are claims from other social media influences that he stole their recipe ideas and put them in his book, et cetera. Their stories, even like stories from my grandmother's kitchen. Some people are saying that those stories match up to stories they had in their uh, books or, or that they've told. Then you got the uh, shop Darius cooks TV. You got the t-shirt sales. We know that he uses the t-shirts as a, a grift to, um, be able to squeeze more money out of his followers by uh, he creates the he creates the drama. When the drama happens, they beg for a discount code. He gives them a discount code, but he also creates taglines on these T-shirts. And then he uh, that's part of uh, part of his scam. Then we got center treats. That's going to be a deep dive. It's coming. Ooh, it's coming. Ooh, it, it's coming and it's good. Ooh, it's good. I was looking at it like, ooh, this is getting good. I'm like, I'm doing this and it's getting good. <laughs> uh, so that'll be coming soon. Then we have the Darius Crooks, uh, Dar Darius Cooks comedy album. So I told y'all, and we actually listened to, or uh, we watched a video of his Make Me Skinny Lord or something uh, bit. And he... Um, that was part of it. So he did a comedy album. This was for me. I don't know if that was a scam. I don't know if people didn't get them. I don't know that. I haven't seen any of that. What I'm assuming for me, what I label this is, is him just grasping at straws for a grift. So 
It's like whatever I'm hustling. I'm whatever. I'm throwing everything at the wall, whatever it sticks. So now I'm gonna try to be a comedian. I told y'all also uh, he was claiming that he was a spoken, a professional spoken word artist in New York as well. Um, people were talking about that grift. Greens and Gravy, we talked about. We're going to talk about it more. But the Greens and Gravy restaurant in Atlanta, uh, he scammed his um, the designer. So the contractor slash designer for the Greens and Gravy restaurant, he ended up, I think he owed her, it's either two or $4,000. Again, I don't, I don't want to start digging because it'll, it'll sidetrack me. I was trying to see if it was real. No, let me stop. Let me stop. I can't stop myself. <laughs> I was trying to see if it's like real handy. But I actually have the actual um, court document. So she ended up suing him because it was a, a interior designer slash contractor who was hooking him up and giving him a huge discount because of the fact that he did the thing that he does constantly. He's doing it right now with Corey and the Cake, cake King where he's like, hey, if you charge me less or don't charge me at all, you'll get exposure from me. Basically, you know, I got this following, et cetera. And so he pulled the same stunt with Greens and Gravy and told the, the, the designer slash con contractor, do this work for me. Give me a huge discount. I'm going to then, you know, give you exposure. So you're going to make way more money. Well, the problem was he didn't even pay the money that he owed the person. And she ended up suing him for... I think it was like under 3,000, if I'm not mistaken, like two to 3,000, something like that. But she ended up suing him. He let it go all the way to court. And literally a day or two before court, the court hearing, he paid her in, uh, in full. Craziness. Just pay the damn bill. But he probably was robbing Peter to pay Paul. So that was part of the grift there. Also, you know that there was a robbery there. Hold on, y'all. Also, there was a robbery there. There's speculation. Some people are saying it was set up. Some people are saying it wasn't. But what we do know is after the robbery, um, he went to not, no longer taking cash at the restaurant. So they only would take credit cards. OK. Um, the other thing is that the employee said that after they were robbed, he showed no care, concern or remorse for them. Surprise, surprise. He's a narcissist. But they ended up basically. Um. They, they ended up basically banding together and saying, you got to do something. This was traumatizing to us, et cetera, et cetera. And so they brought, ended up bringing in a counselor of some sort. Now, what he will go to his IG lies, and I've seen him say, he lied and said like it was his idea and he went out of his way to make that happen. No, it was almost like they were demanding it or they weren't going to work. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me, y'all. So that happened. And then with the credit cards, all of a sudden when he started only accepting credit cards, there started to be comments from customers. These are in Yelps and everything else that their cards were starting, were being used or double charge uh, illegally. Very similar to the Freshco scam. So they were cracking people's credit cards uh, and there were more. It wasn't one person, one, two, one, three, one, four. It was a bunch of comments of that. And that was at the greens and gravy restaurant. So crabby lamp. And Oh, the other thing is so uh, greens and gravy had tons of health violations. We'll go through those at some point. Tons of health violations. Also, the the staff, when it did close, complained. The manager was saying, you know, um, she was paying out of her pocket to uh, buy supplies and things because he would disappear. He'd go to Dubai, not tell nobody he's going, and then they can't get him and they need things, all of that. And so they were trying to keep his restaurant running while he was just gone. That's how I know this fish, Southern fish thing is going to be a fool too. Cause he might have more money, but his behavior is still the same. That ain't, that ain't changed. That ain't grew. The money may have grown, but his behavior ain't grown. So, so it's going to be some foolishness like that too. Trust. Um, the other thing was the lights actually got cut off at greens and gravy during business hours. He had a $25,000 bill. To, uh, the manager said the light company, the, the light company showed up and was like, Hey, you got to pay us $25,000 or we shutting these lights off now. She's like, I can't do nothing. And he ain't, he wasn't around. So she was like, everybody wrap it up. Let's go. And so they turned the lights off. The business. <laughs> he's such a, but he's a mastermind. Okay. So crab, Chicago, so crab Atlanta, rather, 
Um, there was health inspection issues. All all the restaurants had that. You can just cross the board. Um, there was also supposedly I I heard rumblings of a Groupon scam with that. So similar to what was happening with the cupcake cupcake gallery that I told y'all about the other day, um, where people were coming with their discount codes or whatever, and then they would be saying these are not valid. And then people are like, Hey, but I spent money at Groupon. You supposed to honor all that kind of stuff. Um, off the top of my head, that's all I'm remembering about. So crab Atlanta off the top of my head in this moment. Oh no. But that was also where he attacked the worker. That was where he, Oh, he wasn't paying his employee is a, a Kiera was her name. Um, she had worked there for four weeks, had never received a paycheck. He claimed that it was her fault that she never received a paycheck because she never completed her onboarding documents. She's like, nobody gave me onboarding documents to complete. On top of that, if, you're, if you've ever been in management or an employer, you know that that's your responsibility. You have to report um, you know, who you're paying and all of that. There, there's tax obligations um, you know, attached to that. I know this. So I've never had an employee that I did not... Um, make sure they stuff was together, like period. And I did it in corporate America. I did it before they started, like, or on that first day, as soon as they walk in the door or many times I made an electronic process, uh, paperless where they did it before they even started. He didn't, this, this, uh, young lady worked for a month. She at that point was fed up. Like, give me my goddamn money. She shows up there. She is cursing. Give my effing money. He happened to be there at that, uh, show up. She's demanding her money. Uh, she's embarrassing him. You know, he ain't like that. And so he claims that he put his hands on her shoulders like this and was trying to push her towards the door to get her out of the business. I word on the street is that two women broke up uh, two of his patrons. High hi, uh, D hive broke up him attacking the, the, the girl and um, the police were called. All we have is the police escorting. We have a photo. It's not a video, but we have a photo of the police escorting Darius away from the business, walking towards the police station, which was located like behind or around the corner from Greens and Gravy. Um, but that's about all we have. We do know that she, I, I believe to this day, she still never got a dime. Um, but he got on Larry Reed lie and talked about it and put all the blame on a girl, basically. And I'm like, for people that don't know no better, they're like, yeah, she should have signed her paperwork. She shouldn't have been able to work if she didn't have that stuff completed. That's on you and the management. And he did payroll. So this is the other thing. So some people might say, well, he, you know, he's busy and he's an entrepreneur and he's running multiple businesses and that's, you know, that's below his pay grade. Okay, fine. Let's go with that. But he admitted that he was the only one who did his own payroll. He didn't allow anyone else to do payroll. So that's his responsibility to make sure he got all the documents in order to be able to run payroll. Um, the other piece with this um, greens and gravy that I forgot. So, you know, he talks about how he um, closed his businesses because of, you know, it's hard and couldn't find good staff and, you know, all of these other things. It's everything is environmental for him. Not that it was it, nothing on him. Narcissistic behavior, of course. Nothing was on him. Everybody else's and everything around him's fault, around his, his him, it's fault in, versus him. How many of you knew? Do a poll. Make sure y'all still with me. How many of you? I need to do it that way. Did you know? <laughs> Don't too many words. Did you know? That uh, slutty slutty vegan was a couple doors down. So did you know, I don't know y'all, but did you know that slutty vegan, those of you who have heard of it, many of us have, I should have first said how many of you have heard of slutty vegan. But did you know that the Slutty Vegan restaurant was just a couple doors down from Grease and Gravy? So Slutty Vegan was there prior to, uh, is still there. 
she has a national brand. She's everywhere. Magazine. She is really doing it. Living a great life. Just had a baby. All of this stuff. How is she just a couple doors down running a restaurant and, and able to run it through what you claim was just the worst environment ever? I guess the staff is horrible. Like, I can't get good, get good people around here. I guess I'm getting robberies. Um, all of these things, all of these issues that you're having. However, two doors down, we got a black woman running a successful restaurant. Sounds like it's not environmental to me. What's the common denominator? You, <laughs> you. So, slutty vegan. So this is the other piece, and this is the reason I um, brought her brought her up. He also was hating on slutty vegan. They don't get along. Now, what I never got was, and if any of you know, please give me the tea. Send it to me in the DM. I never got the specifics of what the issues was, but he was hating on slutty vegan, and so they not cool. And she was his neighbor. Um, Ariel Brown says, yes, I visited Greens and Gravy before and was excited to visit Slutty Vegan, but they weren't open on Sundays. Yeah, I had the same issue when I was in Atlanta, Alaska. I had planned to have it on Sunday and then found out they weren't open and it was far. So the other day I could have had it. I just didn't feel like driving. It was like 30 minute drive during rush hour because they open late too. But anyway, long story short, my point is she's able to run a successful restaurant two doors down and you, yours you got all these issues that you're blaming on the environment. Interesting. It's never his fault. Never his fault. Then we got Soul Crab Chicago. Um, he closed that one, to my knowledge, voluntarily, except for, I will say, he had health inspection issues there too, major. So they, it was going to have his own issues and probably not last long because of that. It was going to get shut down. Um I told you the story about Donna Hammond, our people who went there, drove about 40 minutes or so, excited to try Soul Food Chicago, gets there. There's a sign on the door that they ran out of food. <laughs> this mastermind ran out of food. This unstoppable mastermind ran out of food in his restaurant. Um... What else was I going to say? Oh, so he closed it. He wasn't forced to close it through the judgment in Atlanta. He was forced to close the up uh, where they just snatched the licenses for the other businesses. Uh, the Soul Crab Chicago. I'm sorry. Soul Crab Atlanta and Greens and Gravy. They just snatched the, the business licenses. Could no longer operate in, in that moment. Chicago, I theorize, is purely opinion based. That because those other two clothes and the stress of that as well. Now, he he says was, he had a mental health breakdown is what he said. It was too much with the restaurants. I had a mental health breakdown. Um, my mental health was more important. That's what he went on the news saying. What he didn't say is the mental health struggle he was going through was the fact that they snatched his business license. The state. How often does that happen? So that was the mental health crisis. And um, so he closed that. And ain't no telling because I didn't hear anything in Chicago. I mean, Chicago wasn't paying him no attention like that. But I didn't hear anything in Chicago about employees, you know, being left high, high and dry and finding out as they were trying to get in the door that morning. You know, oh, Donna's right here in the chat. She says, and I was upset. All I could buy was his $12 pudding. $12. Y'all see how he just be gouging y'all too. That's disgusting to me. Like I get, you got to have a profit margin. And I don't even mind you having a, higher end profit margin but the fact that these are your people and supposedly your followers these people made you why are you trying to gouge them for every penny you're gonna because it's all about him it's all about him again he has these dollar amounts in his head i want to be this i want to have this many millions etc and at any cost i don't care how y'all treat it i don't care what i charge y'all for stuff just give me the money so i can get to this it ain't about y'all it's about me I mean, some of them are okay with that. They just want to be able to say that they um, follow somebody who's uh, a millionaire. Uh, Julie says there was an issue with her plumbing, I believe, and the problem was coming from greens and gravy. Oh, thank you. They had to tear up a part of his restaurant floor near the bathroom. Didn't really affect his business. So there was an issue with her plumbing, I believe, and the problem was coming from greens and gravy interesting 
Well, I mean, as nasty as Darius Crooks is with his cooking and stuff, he probably clogged some drains or something, <laughs> pouring grease down the drains, knowing him. Probably didn't have a grease trap. Um, I believe the plumbing, I believe that his plumbing issues at his restaurant affected Pinkies. Oh, look at y'all informing me. I had never heard this. Well, at least I don't think I ever heard it. Um, because she's right. Okay, she's right next door. And the restaurant was jam-packed. Some who hadn't been served food, and the person said. We only have food for those who who are here. <laughs> He's unstoppable, though, y'all. He's a mastermind. <laughs> ah, you got to love it. You got to love it. Uh, Juice Box is saying, you saved me from ordering from him. This is why I'm here. I swear, it. I know he likes to create the narrative that myself and all of the other people just hate on black people who are successful and we want to see them fail. Hell no, not at all. I think my people who give me a chance know better than that. I don't want to see people victimized by people who are trying to be successful at all costs. That's the difference. If Darius Crooks was living legitimately, even if we weren't friends, even if our business deal went awry back 10 plus years ago, if he was living, which actually is part of the reason I didn't say anything. And I said this, people who know me already know. I always said I thought that he might have been desperate because, again, he ran off from Chicago, you know, peddling his way to Philly for some Philly cheesesteaks and then made a beeline to New York forever. <laughs> but anyway, I thought he was desperate and needed money. He was trying to escape, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And I wrote it off like, he didn't need to do that. Okay, that's where he the way he, the route he went. He trying to make it. He's desperate. He got a lot of issues. Whatever. Write that off. Lesson learned on a many levels for me. And I just moved on. And I was thinking maybe he'll do right here on out. No, he got worse and worse and more enabled and enabled because he never got caught up. He never had to pay the consequences. Again, I got all these stories, all these people he scammed, and he's never fresh go. Uh, cupcake gallery, um, the D have cruise. I mean, I literally, I can just read down this whole list. <laughs> like I can keep going and going and going black food network, all the influencers that he took advantage of, uh, center treats. We can go on and on and on and on with him never paying the consequences. And this is what it would be nice for him to, to realize is that your payday or time to pay up your D day is coming. And the fact that you keep going so hard in the paint because you're getting away with it now means that your fall and what your the, the repayment you're going to have is going to be so much greater. Slow down. Slow down. It's sad because I don't want I mean, at this point, I'm like, it's, it is whatever. But I don't take joy in seeing people suffer, uh, although he deserves it in many ways. Uh, many people feel that way. Um, but again, it's not about hating on a person who's successful that's stupid no it's about protecting people he sat on the floor wait what did i miss <laughs> wait where did that come from what is charles responding to because <laughs> i missed that uh some of the names suggested we got crook's corner uh this is for the uh weekend review set uh segment uh he said the police had to be called because he sat on the floor and wouldn't let them dig up the floor what julie <laughs> you got the tea you are <laughs> what <laughs> that's how he's a kid he's like a man child he is a man child throwing a tantrum in the floor because he didn't want them to dig up the floor to fix this lady's plumbing so she could run her business as well Scamming and crooklin. <laughs> As the crook turns, I like that one, Des Moines. Dem <laughs> I like that one. As the crook turns. <laughs> uh, cement brick. <laughs> cement bricks aren't uh, pound cakes. This is uh, Paul Matellina. <laughs> yeah, those cakes. I mean, wait till I get into. That's another good, like, that's another meaty story for y'all. Right, Sonny Blodro. Uh, how how embarrassing. How dreadful. <laughs> um, but that is another meaty story, the Carolina Pound Cake. Because even when I did the, it's one out there already. But again, these are 
we're doing retrospectives. We're doing the the, the revert revision or re. What is it called when you updated the story? I'm forgetting off the top of my head. It's time. It's, I'm closing us out. Yeah, we had. Yep, I told you we ain't going over three hours. So I'm gonna do these couple comments and then we getting out of here. I didn't finish all the businesses. For those of you who were not here the last time when I went through the businesses, could y'all let them know in the chat what day I went through all the businesses? Was that Friday or was that Thursday of last week? But the reprise, thank you so much. Hey, you there. That was the word I was looking for, the reprise. So this is the reprise or about to be the reprise of all those stories. Uh, Thursday, Marianne is saying I did the, the recap of all of the businesses on Thursday. There were 34 of them that I went through. There's actually a couple scattered in here that I still haven't organized. Um, oh, I have it here. The Wake, he claimed to be a HR director. The company was Wakefield. Oh, I don't have no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got receipts for that. Okay. Uh, just happened to notice that at the bottom of the list. He didn't like Celebrity Vegan because, from what I understand, she had lines and he didn't. Makes sense. Because he's always, you know, he got to be the top dog. He's he's just as much as he claims that people, that's the thing. And some of the D hives are like him, too. And so they're so hateful and jealous of other people that when he says that about those of us who are only speaking truth to his crimes and crimes and Ponzi schemes, they are quick to believe it because they believe that people are as hateful as they are and jealous and, and envious. And I'm like, no, everyone's not like that. That's y'all. But they can buy into that narrative so easily because that's how they are. I'm like, there are people who like to see people win and aren't jealous of them. But there are also people who like to see people win and don't get jealous of them who will call out scammers. That'd, that'd be me. <laughs> I'm one of those people. 30 flavors um, of mold uh, and dryness. Uh, OK, we get it. Yeah, because, again, he's coming out with uh, Carolina pound cakes and he's going to do a uh, brick and mortar bu business and he's going to deliver them again although he did horribly the first time so hopefully the packaging won't be in um usps boxes again and i see some about usps down here let's see <laughs> yeah actually you're saying the same thing uh hey you there saying can he be reported for fraud for every time he lied about non-perishables while packing the pound cakes into those usps uh priority boxes I don't I honestly don't know. I know that there were some people communicating with the postmaster and working on some things in that area of his scamming and Ponzi scheming. Don't know what's become of that. But I do know people have been looking at it that I do know. Hey, you there. Uh, people would rather make a quick buck than do right. He is definitely one of those people for sure. For sure. He's always cut corners. Always. That was one of the things when I did like even being his videographer when he first was starting YouTube, I was the person that was basically polishing up his act, so to speak, like the aesthetics of it, because I'm like, dude, this is nasty. You don't have no nasty dish rag next to the food you cook in. You got dishes in the sink, like all of that stuff. Um, our other friend would be washing the dishes because Darius would just want to move right into the next dish and stuff. And it's like, you can't be recording videos and all of, you know, all the squalor and all of that. Uh, Charles is saying, what did he have to say now? Is he back on or something? Is that what, what this is about? Uh, I, I thought that was his friend, Brand with Cakes, the lady with short hair. I came in late. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure what you're saying, AR. I, and now, I don't know if you're alluding to the story that I heard that he also... Um, that the Carolina Pound Cake Company was also another stolen concept. And on top of that, there was supposed to be another lady, a lady involved who in the very beginning, he was, she was baking the cakes and he was working with her, but like um, very similar to um, Danny Rose, he ended up still in the business from her. Now that's what I heard or it's some, something on that level. Don't know how true that was because I never was able to get receipts for that. The Danny Rose Cemetery th thing, the receipts are plentiful, plentiful. I literally spent hours on Saturday working on it and had to take a break away from it. <laughs> but when it come together, ooh, I can't wait to show you. But I'm going to do the re the reprise of starting off and then we're going to work our way through the timeline while updating on what's actually happening in real time. So we, we're going to treat it that way. 
And it gives me time to work on some of the other stuff uh, as well. Uh, Charles, apparently he's watching us live until Vail caught wind. Then he closed it once Vail started getting the timeline of his frauds. Ah, I wish, oh, please, someone, please, I hope y'all was recording it. Please, I need it, I need it, I need it. Oh, my God, I would love to see that. Lipstick, hey, you there says Lipstick Alley has it all. Yes, Lipstick Alley was the first place. Well, Twitter was the first place I found, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It was one of the regular social media platforms, but I think it was Twitter that, and I wasn't even on Twitter like that at all. And I was like, what the hell? And from Twitter, I found out about Lipstick Alley, went there, and it is like a journal. <laughs> it is literally like somebody's diary of all of his scams in real time. It's so much detail. It is crazy. So much detail. Oh, yeah. Could y'all describe what this looks like to y'all? Uh, somebody posted this on social media. They said Darius showed a picture of this monstrosity on his live yesterday. Looks like a big turd <laughs> on a bed of vomit to me. <laughs> what is that, y'all? <laughs> uh, they know all the tea. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, they, they definitely help. Again, that was how I started to piece things together that I didn't know. It's just so much out there, y'all. It is. Why pound cakes need 30 flavors? Tell me, tell me about that. Right. Right. Well, that's um <laughs> right. Disgusting. <laughs> oh, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah, because I don't even know what it's really supposed to be. But this is, you know, this is the kind of cooking, cooking that he does. Yep. I have no idea what that's supposed to be. I have no idea. Like, the more I look at the, as soon as I think I'm about to say what I think it is, I'm like, no, nah, that ain't it. <laughs> Looks like uh, something totally burned and nasty. Yeah. But, you know, he'll talk it up. He'll be like, yeah, and I, I charred the uh, surface uh, to give that texture, you know, um, just takes you back, you know, back to your, your grandmother when they were, you know, on the land of plantation and she comes home from a long day and the, the fire burning of the, the meat and, you know, just reminiscing of the ancestors from the old country. You know, he just <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> he just gaslights us. That's like the F out of there. <laughs> hey, you there saying there's something about liquid uh, reduction in there. Right. <laughs> and the liquid induction, you know, reduction of, um, you know, the, the, the flavors and the uh, texture of the, the lime, of, the, um, of the, the grits, you know, as they mashed them. You know, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> he be doing the most. Oh, he be doing the most. <laughs> you got to give it to him, though. You got to give it to him. Man, if he would only use his powers for good versus evil and his talents, he would be... Like Tabitha Brown, like he wanted to be. He's just not a good person. It's sad. So sad. He's hurt. Damn it to man child. But anyway, with that, thank you all for joining me this evening. We'll be back tomorrow live. Um, tomorrow evening, we will not be going live during the day um, due to my schedule. And I got to catch up. So again, uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, we will not have day shows unless, yeah, most likely we just won't have day shows unless it's something really pressing uh, because I need that time to be more organized and start working through the, the, some of this other content. So I ain't working every weekend. But anyway, with that, y'all have a good night. Um, make sure to take care and be blessed. And um, I will see y'all uh, tomorrow evening uh, with another episode. We'll see what we'll talk about tomorrow. Oh, I guess I might finish um, this whole breakup thing. Cause now I got to change the thumbnail. Cause this, we didn't get into it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to send y'all out with a with a trailer. All right, good night. Uh, what law I broke? Well, tell me what rule, what law did I break?